Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Super Old Game Saturday. If it's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's a Saturday night, we're here to play some classic gaming goodness. Or sometimes not classic, we can kind of play around it however we really want. Whether it's something I want to play or something you want to play, and actually that's what we're doing this week. On the gracious request of Nikki and Edwalk, they wanted to see Katamari Damacy from Namco. So we're playing it, although we're playing it a little differently. We're using Katamari Damacy Reroll, which came up for the Switch about two years ago. And actually, back in December, it dropped on PS4 and Xbox One. I got the Xbox One version right here in my little group of Xbox One disc releases, which I quite like having. I wish the Switch would have that, but again, someday, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, let's literally get the ball rolling on this one. This came out in 2003 in Japan and 2004 in the U.S. from Namco. It started out interestingly enough, I was doing some research into this. This is actually a game that cost only about a million dollars to make, and it was kind of the end result of a school game development project. And actually, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep quiet during this opening, because the music is amazing and strange, but have a watch and listen. Actually, wait, I take that back. I need to start the game first, then we'll do that. Okay, now let's do it. This takes me back. It's very strange if you've never played this game before, but it'll make sense when we start playing. And yes, this is the reroll version. It says down there it's 2018 of a release, but that's because it came out on Switch two years ago, and it looks like Namco did not want to update the date for this Xbox One release. It's also on PS4 and PC. And initially it's a PlayStation 2 game. So to the menu button, get started. Oh, and this bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm gonna let you know in on a little secret. I deliberately decided to not start playing this game until now because I wanted to go into something that is a big pet peeve of mine and an annoyance coming out of Namco, who is one of the worst companies to do this. I hate to say it. I love this game in general. This is going to be me going a little blind in this remake, which is apparently the same as it is on PS2. I played it to death on PS2, beat it and all that. But yeah, when they released this version, at least on this system, they decided to put in an end-user license agreement. I could be sadistic and say we're going to read through all the shit, but no, we're not going to. Um, but Namco does this with every game, and I cannot stand it. And I don't understand why with a game like this that's a port of a PS2 game. I swear, they better not do this with Pokemon Snap or the new one that's coming out next month. But anyway, every time you put in a Namco game, you got to read this or pass by like everybody else does. Or it's like that one episode of South Park. It's like, nobody reads the end user license agreement. And we don't know what that WW on V2N is. But, we gotta agree to this in order to play this, uh, port of a PS2 game from about almost 20 years ago, but, alright. And we need another one, we need a privacy policy, but, again, I kept this in just to emphasize the idea of how annoying this is and how Namco needs to cut it out. If this was something where it was like an online persistence thing, I could understand it, but for a retro game of yours, no. Alright, fine, now that we're done with that, here we go, now we have... The prince, who I play of, of all the cosmos, and the king of all the cosmos up in that voice box there. We're gonna get some stuff. This is the king, long time no see. Yo, Electverse, good to see you. Hope you are doing well. I've had a nice week and night so far. We're gonna have the Katamari Damacy goodness going on the requests of Edwalk and Nikki, who requested this game with me. And we're playing the Xbox One version of this via Katamari Damacy reroll. Indeed, long time no see on the prince, because I haven't played this game in about... God... 15 years. I had this on PlayStation 2, beat it, and then I gave it to one of my cousins who never gave it back. 
But I can't really be too mad about that because I saw them a couple years ago and they said, you know, I went back to this game, thank you for giving it to me, it's so amazing, I never would have played it otherwise, which made me feel very flattered, so that was something nice to see and hear. And today is a good day for rolling the Katamari, which is that ball here if you've never played it. Where the first roll is second falls, roll, roll, roll. A game I know next to nothing about? Okay, well, let this be your crash course on this game, which is a game that came from Namco in 2003 in Japan and 2004 here. It actually was a result of a school game development project in Japan that they made for like under a million dollars, and then they were able to make it or get with Namco, or maybe Namco's involved in it. It might be like Portal, where there were people at DigiPen who were making that game, and then they went to, Bun to uh, not Bungie, um, Valve for that one. I know the basics. Well, we're gonna go through the basics because I'm starting this one pretty much blind. So anyway, the King Cosmos is going to bother just for a minute for the tutorial. And basically what they're gonna do... Well, they're gonna ask us a very personal question. This is a very strange game, but I love how unabashedly strange this game is. And we're going to... Yeah. Do we like vibration? Well, no, well, we hate it. Playing is best. Love going all natural. Which I guess is an interesting question when you really think about do people like rumble in games, but... Okay, turn off with the view button on the controller. I'm playing on Xbox One, so that's whatever the back button used to be. They changed the button names for this console, but whatever. Alright, so here's how it works. And this is going to be unique for me, because I've never played this game on the Xbox One before. I'm used to playing on the PS2, where you have the analog sticks. It's nice to have a picture here, right next to each other. But, we're going to make do. Use both of the analog sticks to move. Pull one down and one up to turn the Katamari in directions you want to go. Forward, backwards, just skid around, press in. Okay, I can't do the press in yet. Roll sideways and pushing both left and right, and diagonally left and right, going diagonally so. All right, so they're gonna give me the tutorial on this, just like I did on the PS2. My, very princely indeed, such skill and such class. Well, this game does have a lot of skill and I guess sort of class when you really think about it. Dazzle, we feel swoon coming on. Okay, and I can't do, I don't like the dual stick controls. Okay. You don't like the idea of it? You don't like... like or, like you're saying, you've known next to nothing about this, so I'm gonna assume you haven't played it elsewhere. So, is it the idea of the concept of it? Because I'll say this. This game definitely has a learning curve, as far as it... And there are a couple of releases that don't use the dual analog. I know that, um... Because me and my Katamari was on the PSP. Didn't have a second analog stick on that system. So it didn't have a dual control. And there was also the suggestively titled Touch My Katamari for the... It was on the Vita. And I don't know if that had it either. That has dual analog on the system. But anyway. Okay, so I'm curious about that because that's an interesting case because this is a game that's very specific with what you need to do with the analog sticks, including pressing them in to do quick turns and then doing the up-down repeatedly to do that roll. And I'll tell you something. So it's interesting you brought this up, like first, and thank you very much for that, and thank you for tuning in every week. I appreciate that. People I know who played this game, that movement that I'm doing right now, or trying to do, there we go, do the dash. That's something that, to do that fast, it takes a lot of practice. And it's not always easy to do that. So I understand that being kind of a stumbling block for people. Even to the point where I almost wonder maybe, because they were going to plan to do a version of this on the DS, if they'd have like a dual, uh, a controller. I mean, I play a little, but they just feel weird. Which is an interesting question to that, and I'll put that to chat as well as we go, which is, what are some games, and by the way, if you're new here at the show, just to give a little bit of an idea, this is about me showing a game that either is requested by you or that I want to show, either or, feel free to jump into this conversation, you're not going to be backseat gaming, you're not going to be, you know, getting annoyed with me, or getting me annoyed or anything, I love that input, I love that discussion that comes from the show, that's the whole point, and if you have anything to that, let me know in the chat, and don't feel shy, I will not bite. But anyway, to go back to that quickly, you're saying the dual analog control feels a little weird at times. Question then, what are some games that do analog control like this that you feel you might have played that think maybe they kind of nail it? One I can think of, okay, that's Jump, by the way, which pretty much is just... Honestly, the reason to do that, I never really understood why to do the Jump, even on the PS2. Alright, so we're doing Amazing by Our Father, who, um, well, we're gonna get into that a little later, as far as some of the, I guess, social context of this game. In fact, we might do that now. Alright, so we're hearing the Fugue 7777 here, which is the King's theme. Now, 
All right, he's flying through the Earth. He's crashing the stars. The subtext of this is he got drunk and is destroying the stars. He's the king of all... and that, those planets. Basically, the idea is that the king of all the cosmos is... Well, the king of all the cosmos of the stars in the Earth or in space. And, well, he did that. That is the context. He is drunk, apparently, doing that. In fact, I think on the box for this, there is an alcohol-tobacco reference on it. Yeah, there is, for the rating on this. And, well, yeah, he comes back, and, well, we have to do what he wants. And he's gonna be very passive-aggressive about that. So, if you want to read in an idea of this being an uh, allegory about tense and or abusive relationships with parents and children, well, be my guess. But anyway, the sky's full of stars. We broke it, or he broke it. He was very naughty indeed. You can write into that what you want, but he is sorry enough, well, sort of. But um, apparently he's getting aroused by this. Yeah, this is very weird. This game is very strange in terms of some of its stuff, but I also love the idea of how unabashedly itself it is in terms of everything, and that's what I like to be seeing here. And I'm glad to be able to play this, and thanks again to Nikki and uh, Edwalk for requesting it. All right, so basically he goes into these discussions as far as things, saying how beautiful the stars were. Almost made to be almost a nuisance now is nothing but darkness. And basically we're gonna talk to him and then we're going to do it again, we're gonna fix the stars for him. To me, dual sticks really only work in games like Robotron. Okay, so that's interesting. Basically the idea of something like a Twitch concept, or something where it's kind of simple. And in Robotron, you played it from um, midway. Basically moving around with one joystick and then shooting out in the other based in the direction you push. Let me show Robotron at some point. I think I have a collection on the PS2 that has it. Yeah, I do. It's the, uh, the Midway Arkham Treasures. But yeah, it is, that's an interesting case of something like that, but this one definitely is a little more weird. Na 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 Yeah, I, Edwalk, great to have you. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Hope Nikki is doing well. Hope everyone is doing well. And uh, feel free to jump in on the Katamari goodness. And thank you for your request. I appreciate it very much and for showing up. Anyway, so we have to hurry and bring the stars back. Our problem, your problem. Yes, you owe us and the existence. We collect on the debt. Hand in hand, always there. Yes, the very definition of father-son bonds. She's here too. Okay, well, again, thank you very much and great to see everybody. Let's get cracking on Katamari Damacy, the re-roll version for the Xbox One, this is a little different than it is on Switch and PS4, from what I understand. Mostly, I guess, because of the graphics, but also because the controller I'm using, because you don't have the dual analog sticks right next to each other. As Electroverse in the chat was mentioning, that's sometimes a weird thing when you're coming to dual analog control with certain things. But again, with practice, this game will come naturally. And we're going to be going around. We can also roll around. Okay, not yet. We can't. Okay, build of the Katamari. This is the idea of how this works. This is our training mode. I'm starting this fresh, by the way, from this. I bought this game about a month ago. I haven't put it in really yet, except just to make sure it's installed. But, all right, so there we go. We're going up the up, the yellow escalator. Woo tangents. First time on Earth. By the way, we're going to Earth to get all this stuff, because the idea of the king of all the cosmos is that when you're on Earth, there's all this stuff there, so you can also make a uh, consumerism parallel to this game, feasibly. But with all these things on Earth... We have to pick them up, we have to get the Katamari to the size that's over on the left. I guess they're saying it's five centimeters now, it will go up to whatever they tell us. And we have to do it within a uh, time limit. Well, later we do. Now we're just practicing, just rolling stuff, picking it up with your Katamari. We're hearing these really strange but really great pieces of music. I think this is a uh, You Are Smart. We're gonna hear a lot of other great pieces of music later that really are good stuff. Strange, but also has a great style and great, I guess, cross-section of genres of music, like jazz, and J-pop, and rap, and even, like, big bands, which is really good stuff. All right, so for the training mode, we're just rolling around, picking stuff up, small stuff. If you've ever played this game before, just to give you a little bit of a primer, you roll around, you pick up objects that are going to fit for the Katamari of your current size. When you have that flash like that, by the way, on the screen, it means it's grown, the camera pulls out a little bit, and as it gets bigger, we can pick up other things. Like, I rolled over that, um, what was that? Okay, that was an eraser. So I'm picking up Mahjong tiles, and they do show what you pick up over here, and apparently there's an- Okay, if you crash into something, stuff will pop off of your Katamari, and you'll lose mass to it. The idea is get it as big as you can. For later levels, we're gonna be on a time limit for now. We're just rolling around, picking stuff up. And actually, I found out the other difference between this on the Switch and, uh... Okay, on the Switch, at least, is that the Xbox One, PS4, and Switch versions have achievements. There's an achievement for this game, for this, uh, version of it, that is... Rolling up literally everything that's on Earth. So you have to basically 
pick everything up in the game with your Katamari. It's worth about 190 of the thousand achievement points they give you out of this game. But as you get bigger, you get to pick up bigger things like those Mandarin pieces. And as you pick stuff up, sometimes it'll have an effect where it'll oblong your Katamari. So I'll, I'll try and get it to 10 because when you get to 10, I believe you can pick up the uh, nail clippers. Okay, the batteries in that case. All right, so he's giving me this... Okay, he made a 10 centimeter Katamari. I think this is the um, training. They stop you at 10, and later levels we're going to be going higher under time limit, and there he vomits a rainbow, and we're off. Forgot, slipped the mind. When rolling on Earth, there are a few more things to be careful of. Okay, you can't roll up Katamari, uh, or objects into your Katamari. They're larger than what it is. If you crash into it, items will bust off, and you'll lose size. And they give you the quick tips. I believe that was also in the PS2 version, but it's been a while since I played that one. One thing I'm noticing right away is the loading is way faster on this version than it is on the PS2. That was bad on PS2, but still, something to notice. Okay, so next time we're gonna get a bigger one. And they give you a little, little bit of recap at the end of each stage, showing what have you picked up. And rank you based upon the type of things you picked up. In this case, I mostly picked up snacks like those cookies and uh, Mandarin Origins. Or oranges. And stationary and game stuff like Majin tiles. And Earth is rule of, the, of uh, big things. And what happens at the end of the stage is... Oh, I got an achievement already. The beginning of rolling. Make a star one. Yeah, we're going to see achievements pop up like crazy because I've not played this yet. But anyway, that's what's going to go on. Forgot your own planet? Really you're serious? Just small but a bit slow. It's apparent we can't feel, feel partly responsible. Yeah, this is where the... Um, Oh, and also, a funny thing about that, since I'm playing this on Xbox One and I have a PC with Windows, I'm seeing the achievement pop up on the screen as well, and it's actually going over the chat window, so... There might be a brief period where it might go over that, but we'll see. Alright, so this is my home planet. This is basically the hub of the game, where you can visit Earth by going to the Space Mushroom and complete the challenges you've completed. Please save the game and home planet before quitting. If you don't, it won't be saved. Okay, so there's no autosave. From what I understand, apparently this release did not change a whole lot from the PS2 game. And apparently it's like right off of the Japanese PS2 game. Okay, so I'm just gonna check some of the controls. Usual controls. Simple controls, okay. I don't know what simple controls are, which goes to Alec versus point about dual analog control feeling weird. I'm not sure what that does. You know, let's do a control check. See what that is. Okay. Alright, this is interesting then, because I did not know this version had this. I don't know if the PS2 game has it either, I don't remember. But uh, correct me, chat, if that's the case, that it does. So, alright, simple controls is just use one analog stick, basically, and then it puts the shifting on the right a little, and then also on buttons. Okay, so you can basically single analog this thing if you want to, which, I guess I'll go back to, like, first for your question. I never played the game that way, do you think that that might help your ability to play it if you're thinking analog controls or dual analog is gonna be weird? While I walk around my, um... I guess my home planet, showing the objects picked up, locations, size chart, photo album, which I think will come later, and names of things. Or hearing the wonderful stars walk is wonderful, and this game has wonderful music indeed. But in order to get going, I need to hit the left bumper to go over to the mushroom and, well, see the cousins. I'm pretty sure there's an option to, un to get an achievement for that. Maybe. Okay, I mean, I don't know. I mean, for the purpose of it, maybe I'll just, you know what, let's do that. Just because I'm curious, and because the point of the show is also to show off elements of games that you might be curious to see, or might, I might be curious to see or not know of, we're going to do simple controls for one level. So apparently it's just one analog stick, break by pulling back on it, quick shift on the left trigger, and press one of the right, press one of the right analog, the rest of the right analog stick for that. Alright, we're going to try that one level, then we're going to go back to normal. Alright, so hit right bumper, go over to the planet where... You're able to go to the next stage. That's Mega Star 1. We did that. Here's Mega Star 2. And we're going to get a little bit of a brief from our father. Mangang Dang Tang Hali Po. We stopped. Oh, been to the Philippines. Stopped in the day before yesterday. Alright, so we're getting a little cultural in this game as far as, you know, information. I guess that is part of, Phil of, Phil of the Philippine languages, I think. Of the languages that are. Specifically from there, I'm not sure. I guess, chat if you know, let me know. I'll be very curious. Hope we could visit during the days rolling, like that's possible. We're a present for him is what we're thinking of. That's also the idea of what he's saying. When you go into levels, you'll see presents, you can pick them up. 
And then there's the loading screen, which they put in. Yeah, it's way faster than it is on the PS2, but again, running on Xbox One, I'd expect that. Alright, so we're in the house today. And for more main levels, what they do is they give you this list of what you gotta do. So I have to get a Katamari of 20 centimeters before time runs out in 7 minutes. And that varies based upon what it is, and if I don't do it, well, we'll see. Alright, well, we get... Okay, yeah, it's weird. I'm playing it with just the one analog stick. I'm basically just one-handing this game while you're listening to... Uh, the Moon Prince and the King, I believe, is the name of this track. But The Moon and the Prince by Kenji Nunuma. This is a great piece of music. Alright, so... Alright, so when you're doing it just with one analog stick, this is a new case for me. He's just pushing the left analog stick forward, and I guess just using the right one to point yourself. And then, let's see. said... Switching directions was with the left trigger and the right analog stick. Okay, this is gonna be weird for me, just because I've never played it this way. Can you do, like, a quick turn? Alright, no, I guess not. Alright, so, this is, okay, this is gonna be very interesting just to see how this works, but again, what I'm gonna do is when I play this once, then I'm gonna go back to the other way just because I know it more, but... Alright, as I was saying before, you have, like, oblong things that can hit your Katamari, like that pencil there, and what it does is basically we'll put the... Okay, if I can get that going again... Yeah, I'll, you'll kind of go up like that. So it is following some element of physics. Again, this is very weird. With how it's controlled just with one analog stick. But, again, curious idea. Chat, a question, I guess, for anybody who in the chat who might have played this version of the game. Or if remembers if the PS2 does this as well. Have you ever played with the single analog control and do you like it better than the dual? Again, anything else you want to talk about with this game, elements about the music, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, let me have it, and uh, we'll have a discussion. That's the part of the show and I, I love. And also, being able to show these games off with you and have discussions and take your requests. Which, of course, this is, and again, I thank you very much for it. Uh, we're rolling up the house, there's a not NES, or not Famicom. Actually, I guess it's more of a TurboGrafx-16, because you're picking up the, uh, the Hue cards for it, which is very interesting. I probably need to get up up to the table, or up to whatever this is, so I can get something bigger. That's what you really want to do with this game. It's kind of like a snowball simulator in a weird way, which is a concept that the sequel would be pulling to. My favorite song is Lonely Rolling Star. That is a terrific song by, um, Saki Kabata. And I have the entire soundtrack, by the way, on my... Actually, no, I imported the soundtrack back in the day it came out, so, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of this music. Because of the great variety. And we'll hear Bowling Joy Stories we go along in one of my favorite tracks, which is going to be uh, Katamari Taino, but we'll hear that way later. Okay, so we got 10 centimeters. He'll stop every so often. On the PS2, that was kind of hiding the load screen, the way that worked, because what it does is that when you get it up big enough, they give you those little uh, areas. So basically, you have to load the next area, because you can go in there, it says 10 centimeters, you can roll over it and come in to do that. And on PS2, I had to load it. Here, it seems like it's a lot shorter to do that. But yeah, okay, I, I like hearing that, and that's a great song as well. Very good choice. I guess then, got another question chat. Anybody else who has familiarity with this game or fandom of this game, what are your favorite pieces of music from this? Or from any of the Katamari games? There definitely were a lot that came on the back of this one, which was... I remember when this came out in 2004. I played it... I think I rented it initially because I had heard... There's this new game that's coming out. This Katamari game. It seems very weird, but... It's also $20 only. They released it as a budget release when they dropped it here. And I saw it and I said, okay, this is interesting. Let me rent this. I played it. I was hooked. This is, it's one of those, I'll tell you, it's one of those games that is one of the appeal of games. It's this really simple game that you can kind of explain very quickly, but also something that is so compulsive to be able to say like, oh, I want to roll up everything. I want to go here. I want to get this. And it, it's kind of the same thing over and over again, but it always is appealing to be going that way. Watching this and eating Fritos is a great, or Frito, oh, Fritos, I think, yes? Fritos or Fritosis? Um, great way to spend a Saturday. Well, I thank you very much, and I love spending Saturdays with all of you, you know, showing games off and playing games you want to see. So, again, I thank you very much for that. I love the discussions we have and want to keep this going. Hence why I take your requests and, again, want to give these games the justice that... You would want to, you would want to, if you're, you were sitting here with me right now, playing the game, just enjoying the time with it, or just sharing what your experiences of it might be, fandom of music, or whatever it is. Okay, so we hit 20, Fritos, okay, there you go. Okay, so when you hit it, they give you a little bit of a, uh, a little status here, saying, alright, you did this in 3 minutes and 56 seconds. And so basically he says, okay, there you go, we'll leave us to our work, we can keep playing until the time runs out. 
and then when the time runs out, then we go back. So basically, at this point, you're kind of going for a high score, which, again, plays with that compulsive nature of games like this, where, yeah, I can get it to the 20 meter centimeters I need, but I want to roll up everything. I want to get everything there. And again, that sense of scope and scale as I was in this tiny room picking stuff up, but now, you know, I'm rolling here. I'm picking up the, the stuff on the table. I'm picking up the pencil case. I'm picking up the tape measures. Those those mice that were giving me trouble, I'm running them over and putting them into my ball. And when you've seen what happens at the end, it gets a little wonderfully sadistic when you really think about it. The idea that, yeah, we're going to be blowing them up to turn them into a fiery supernova. And I'm trying to do the roll-up, which is very weird to do with one analog stick. The most fun part of this game is to roll is after you get the goal. Indeed. Because you want to try and get as high a score as possible, and you want to show your friends, or compete with your friends, and there is multiplayer to this, of two players in this version. I think they did miss an opportunity by not putting this online. All, or not this this version, anyway. I think uh, Beautiful Katamari for the 360 went online with it. Which I made a mistake when I mentioned about a couple months ago about that one, saying, oh, it's backwards compatible with the Xbox One so we can fix the frame rate problem by playing it that way. Yeah, no, I was wrong, unfortunately. Well, I think it's the thing about Beautiful Katamari. I'll get into that when I play it at some point. It's not that the frame rate's bad, it's just that they go for 60 FPS. This is 30, it's the same way it is on the PS2 as well. But whereas this one is totally solid, it's never slowing down. On the PS2, it didn't either. Katamari is, Beautiful Katamari is going for 60, and it doesn't hold 60. And I got actually somebody very mad, actually, for mentioning that, because I said... Beautiful Katamari came out in 2007 for the Xbox 360. It came out right when Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare came out. And I kind of did something you're not supposed to when you talk about this game. Mention the graphics. Because, yeah, the graphics are very simplistic and utilitarian in this, but they have a nice style. But my point was at the time was saying, well, if Call of Duty 4 looks as amazing as it does and it runs at 60 FPS locked, why can't the Katamari game, which kind of rocking the same graphics you're seeing here, the same tech graphics at least... That being said, it's still a fun game, it's just more of like a tech thing, because I've noticed that every so often when it comes to games like that. But it's still fun, I just need to play more of it, and admittedly that's, aside from We Love Katamari on the PS2, that's the only one I could really do right now, because I do not have the console to play, oh, uh, was it Katamari Forever was the one on the PS3. Uh, I don't have a way to stream PSP yet, so I can't do me and my Katamari, I don't have a Vita. By the way, when you run into 30 seconds left, you hear that blaring, that boo did And he's like, yeah, that gets really loud, but, um, we should be good on that. Oh, by the way, there is the present he was talking about. He said he drops the present down. Find that. You just have to roll your Katamari up big enough to find it. You pick that up, and you get little gifts when you come out at the end of the run. You have to pick that up before the time runs out. Thankfully, I did, so we're good, as we have the Katamari at 35.6 millimeters. Or 35 centimeters and 6 millimeters. So time's up. And with the Royal Rainbow, back we go. Alright, so they wanted 20. We got 35 centimeters. So that's pretty good. They moved to tiers with the sizes. Also, that dialogue will change, by the way, depending upon how well you do. If you just barely cross the threshold, you're like, yeah, it's alright, but at least you did what we wanted. Now he's really happy. And we got the present, which is a scarf. As I think it is. Most of the stuff I collected this time was stationary. All right, now we're just in the sky. When you come back to a level after already playing it... Okay, I got another achievement. Rolling Sweeper. Make it start two. I think that's the achievements mostly in this game, is completing the main levels. You see cutscenes. They're all Japanese in this version. Alright, so that's the overarching narrative, actually, of this game, where you run into the kids there who are on Earth watching their robot attacking show, and they're seeing what's happening here, and I think the idea is that the parents never understand it. So it's like the idea of, I'm trying to think of a good uh, parallel to this, where you have kids who are, like, believing in stuff that the parents don't. Actually, let's use that gift. Let's put the scarf on him. That's usually what these are. These are, like, um, items to be able to deck out this, the prints in. I really do like the attention to detail, or when you put the item on, it actually shows that in, like, the menus here. Alright, we're going back to normal controls. Not that I played bad with simple. In fact, I'll, let's go, I'll mention that in, in that case. I like playing with the simple control, but it just felt weird not having both of those sticks to basically do the quick dash. I think you can do it, but it seemed like the button combination I was doing wasn't doing it. 
but we'll be in uh, a little better territory for me, you know, going now. And also, you get other things as well, because you have the main Make a Star levels. Make a Star 1, 2, and 3 is over there. You also get Make Cancer, because basically we're going to make the constellations, and if you're familiar with uh, the signs of the Zodiac, or elements of astrology, these might seem a little familiar. You know, let's make a Cancer, or make a Yummy Cancer, as the game tells us. I'm not kidding, that's really the line, if you've never played this. If you have, you probably know, and you're probably smiling and saying, Yeah! Which, again, is the appeal of this game. What is it? Something's not quite right. We get it. This guy doesn't look delicious. This guy does not seem yummy at all. And we're still hungry. Can you see that, silly? Okay, so, this is the idea. And actually, I think they do... I don't know, I'm not necessarily an astrology expert, but... What they do with these is they take ideas of what the constellations are based on. So we're talking about crabs here, because... I think the idea is the Cancer is based around the idea of crustacean, I think. And we're gonna get to another one, Ursa, Mi Ursa Major. Oh! Okay, that was unique. Um, the crab came out and just ran into my Katamari. I mean, it's almost like in Chicago. And then he ran into my knife! But anyway, he's running into the Katamari, and I think... <laughs> oh god, I'm not even started yet! Also, I can't start this right now while that dialogue is up. The later levels, you can just bypass him, and then it'll say, like, why are you ignoring me? But alright, so... I've gotten two by doing nothing. So it's like the prince is getting a Katamari going by doing absolutely nothing. To make the yummiest cancer possible. Yep, indeed. Uh, all you have to do is roll up as many crabs as you find. These are specific missions, by the way, where they give you... Objects of a specific kind, so roll all these up, as many as you can, within the time limit. We have seven minutes. I think in this case you don't have a sizing reason. Alright. And we got another new track, which is... Oh, Christ, what is the name of this one? Uh... Uh, chat, help me out here, I don't- it's weird, I ha- I usually don't go into these things, uh, or I do go to these- these things kinda winging it, kind of like, off the cuff, and I am discussing it now, but, I actually did write down what the names of all the songs in this game are, and who did the- who did the music, or at least the artists for them, but thankfully it's not running into a licensed, uh, music case of this game, thank god, I was afraid of that, but if I'm not on next week, you'll understand why, which I don't think will be the case, but, uh, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, I wrote down all the names of the music because I want to celebrate the music and all the people who made it possible. Because there's a lot of artists that kind of were contributing to the songs for this. And it just sounds terrific. And again, it has a great variety. And we're going to hear the, the other stuff that we mentioned. We're going to hear Lonely Rolling Star later. We're going to hear Katamari, Taino, and I can't wait to hear those too. Katamari sounds like Kalamari. How appropriate. Yes, indeed! As far as, I guess, the idea of what we're rolling up here... I think that was the idea when I first heard this game, too. Or get it seafood, yes, absolutely, there you go. I do love the idea of that pickup, because honestly, I mean, I guess I might have thought of that for a second when I first played Katamari. I mean, I think first I thought Calamari, or... Yeah, Calamari, I guess Calamari, because I was thinking like Calamari Desert in Mario Kart 64. But yeah, I mean, and that's the other reason I like doing this, coming up with uh, hearing what people have to say as far as different things. Even if they haven't played the game like that before, they're, they're just reacting to what they're seeing like, Whoa, what's this? I'm picking up mayo, I'm picking up the nice fiddler crab. I can imagine just making a nice, uh, cra or a nice crab meal with this, but unfortunately we're gonna be... Well, we're gonna, okay, we're gonna be cooking these crabs one way or another, and getting coconut crabs as well, but... Yeah, so we're gonna be able to cook this, and if you come from a state where you're big on seafood, yeah, you're probably getting really hungry right now. You don't have Fritos or something else to go about. Alright, just keep going, and I got seven minutes. They do give you a lot of time, and at this point, we're in this same area. But as I go bigger, I'm gonna be able to go and get bigger and more of the crabs. Actually, I think, with its sequel, um, we love Katamari, which is also on the PlayStation 2. I think, for some of these missions, they actually like, put a limit on you. When you hit a certain amount, it then stops. I don't remember if this one does, because it's been a while since I played the original. And I have not played it raw probably in about 15 years. So we'll see how that goes. But from what I understand, this is pretty much a straight port of it from the PS2, the Japanese PS2 version. Which is only disappointing to me, because I would have loved to hear some of the English translated voiceovers, including the Morgan here when we beat this level. We're getting crabby in a stereotypical city food state. There you go. Welcome, Protorova, by the way. Good to see you. And thank you for joining the Katamari Damacy goodness, albeit with the re-roll release. But I'm definitely having fun playing this and, uh, connecting with all of you as we try and roll up the crabs to make a yummy cancer while hearing that terrific music. 
I mean, it's, it's, I think the music is kind of fitting when you really think about it, because it's very varied in the styles of music that you hear. It fits for the, I guess, the Japanese milieu of it, but it also kind of goes to the idea of, hey, I'm rolling up everything I see, so let me, uh, you know, have music that reflects that. Okay, one other thing I probably should mention. Well, okay. Mr. Krabs, I wish you were steamed and served with a side of melted butter. Ah, SpongeBob SquarePants. All right. One thing I did want to mention quickly, though, is... Yeah, all right. When your Katamari gets big, we started underneath the house. When it gets big enough, you can't go in those areas anymore. So I can't roll into that without, you know, crashing and having stuff going. But when you go big enough, you'll have to pick up stuff. All right, the shrimp looks good, too. Yeah. Also, that's an interesting detail. When you're on the television over there, it's actually reflecting my rolling around. I don't think this game has uh, replays. I think one of the later ones has it, but if that's not correct, let me know, chat. Actually, one other thing is that yeah, you saw there, yeah, the uh, Japanese lamps or the uh, the garden lamps there, they're moving up and down, so I can use those to kind of platform up. Although the other thing you can do, let me see if I can show this off. You press the analog sticks forward on, I guess, in front of like a... Uh, fixture like that, you can roll up, so you can reach higher areas. In fact, that's what I could probably do here to get up to where all those crabs are. But I do have three minutes, so I should be able to collect more. I think there's some areas you can't roll up high enough to like that, and you have to be a specific size in order to do it. We're getting more crabs there, and I think, yeah, I think, I think this is like beautiful, or, um, uh, we love Katamari, because I think it is limited to how many crabs there are on level, and I need to collect all 100. And because I'm bigger now, I can get, oh, let's see, 97, there's 98. No, too late. What are you doing? Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Vanny Scampers roll it up before it run. Oh, okay. Right. Because you probably noticed one thing if you've never played this. You're seeing, like, exclamation points going ov over uh, creatures' heads every so often. When they, they they're, they're nervous when that happens, and they'll run away. So, yeah, I was like, don't let that stand, so just roll right into them. Okay, so I got a hundred of them here. Okay, alright, this is not all of them, it's just that, yeah, the golf um, flag is not going to let me pick that one up, or I got to be at the right altitude. In fact, I'll try the dash. Also, that's the other thing, the camera is a little enclosed in some ways, so, oh, right, it goes up and down, so I can just get the crab that way. The camera's a bit enclosed in the sense that when you go against the wall like that, it will... It'll do, like, the Mario Sunshine thing, where it kind of gives the, uh, idea of where the camera is, or it'll pull the camera upwards. So you do- it does a good job of kind of keeping an eye on where you are and making it so you're not going to necessarily think that, oh, I'm going to be having my view blocked. So in that case, I do think- or like that, right there, when it went into the circle. Alright, so there's more in the closet. Something's coming. Alright, that's another warning you get when there's, like, a rushing, you know, creature or something coming towards you, or a person as it is. And we'll pick people up, by the way, later, if you never played this game. And if you did, I mean, you're gonna know that that is one of the most hilarious things you can do in this already very strange and hilarious game. There we go, we're at our last 30 seconds. Alright, there we go. Now I'm doing the turns, at least, because I'm pressing in the right hand, or both of the analog sticks to do that. Although in this area, it's small enough, I haven't even necessarily had to go and do the dashing too much. But again, that's the idea of this game. You get bigger, you pick up bigger things, you get to new areas, and it's very nice. And there's another, um, crab. So we got 110. We're doing pretty good. Alright, there's another one if I can get to it in time. Okay, I got one of them. 111. There we go. This looks delicious, but slightly disturbing. Alright, let's take the yum yum rainbow back. <laughs> Yummy indeed. Alright. And apparently he ate so much he got sick. Too crab intensive and kind of gross. But anyway, 111. Fab, fab, this is what we want. Actually, I'm doing pretty good on this for having not played this version of the game for quite a while. Crab heaven. One step forward to the finest starry sky there is. And we're drawing. Alright, so we're releasing the sky and we're gonna make the yummy cancer. And I got another achievement, crustacean collector. There we go, and it gives you a percentage of how many. Here we go. Yeah, in the PS2 version that came in the US, they also have it in English, where this little girl saying, like, Cancer came scuttling back. So yummy! 
I kind of wish, though, I'll say this, I wish this had the English voices as well, just because it's hilarious to be hearing that. Even, like, there's one later where you do that with cows, and then it says, like, she's, like, mooing, and it's strange, but so funny. And as strange as I'm making this game sound, or it sounds like if I'm ridiculing it, I'm not. I love this game for its gameplay, but also for how unafraid it is to be what it is, and that might come from its background, the idea that it was a game that was made as a school project, pretty much, and then turned into a full release. You have to, I mean, when you get in a situation like that, and, like, first you mentioned Robotron, the, and going back to the games like that, a lot of times you really had to think, or developers had to really think about ideas, and sometimes those are where some of the best ideas for games come from, when it's the idea of something small, or something that's people are making out of passion. People mentioned stuff like Mega Man 2. That was a game that was made on the developers' off times. Like, Capcom said, make games we want you to make. You can make this as long as you want, but on your own time. They made it on their own time. Then they released it, and people loved it. And it was the kind of thing, like, you would never know that until you, you know, had that going. Alright, so we made the Yummy Cancer and got through Star 2 and 3. By the way, when we made the Cancer... At the end of it, when you put it up in the sky, it did show a little percentage, so it does show how many of the crabs you got. So you could feasibly go for 100%. Again, the compulsive nature of this game, which is what makes it so good, makes you want 100% everything in this. As far as completing the game is concerned, I hear this game is about four hours. I don't know if we'll complete it tonight. I'll try. If I don't, I'll come back to it next month. But uh, that will be nice, and I'm already having a good time, and hope you're having a good time too. Seems like the chat is very active tonight, and I'm happy to see that, and thank you very much for stopping by. Alright, so, the king has been around the world to show, and he's been to Portugal, as well. Hope you can visit during the days rolling, like that's possible. Alright, and he's mentioning again we have a present that's down there, so we'll try and see if we can find it. They send these things to Earth on the loading screen. I do like how they disguise the loading, but again, it's so short in this version, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And actually, I guess chat question... I'm gonna assume most people who played this have not played this on the Xbox One. They probably played it on Switch or PS4, maybe even PC. Does it load better on those systems? I played a little bit on the Switch, but mostly my experience is on PS2 and this one. Alright, so we're going to town quite literally. And the warning's already going off. Alright, so we gotta get bigger and bigger. I'll say we're 50 centimeters now in 9 minutes. Alright, let's go. Alright, here we go. Now we're rocking to... A Crimson Rose and Gin Tonic by Otto Mizumari. Again, this is good stuff, and I just love the music for this so much because of the style and the jazziness. I mean, even if you're someone... Because I've heard people sometimes say, like, well, they're going to be into different styles of music. I'm someone who kind of goes for, like, like classic stuff anyway, like classic rock stuff, progressive rock, stuff like that. Like the 70s, 80s, things like that. And I definitely have fandom of stuff like, you know, like J-pop and, like, jazz and things like that. It's pretty wide what I have, but... Regardless of what your fandom of music is, there's certainly something that's going to be satisfying you, or again, having you remember the music. It's the kind of thing that, when I played this game, it's like, oh yeah, I'm like, trying to sing along to these vocals on this music, in particular, other pieces of music, even though my experience with Japanese speaking is uh, way in my past, and unfortunately, I have not gotten back to it. Maybe I should, though. It might be an idea, but like, I try to sing along with it, because I'm like, so into the game, and so into the experience of it. Or it's like when Crazy Taxi came out. This is going to seem like a bit of a tangent, but there's a point to it. Which is that when Crazy Taxi came out, and unfortunately I can't show that game off the way I'd like to show it to make this point more vivid. It has music from The Offspring and Bad Religion, which is 90s punk. And my brother is not into that at all. He is big on like, classical music and things like that. Like uh, choral elements. I caught him like in the shower singing All I Want from The Offspring from that game. It was like, I caught you. You said you hate this kind of music. I do hate this kind of music, but it fits so well for this game. And again, it goes for this game, and holy shit, I'm stuck. All right, e, that was weird. All right, now I gotta try and see if I can't get out of that. All right. Okay, that's never happened to me before. I don't think that's a glitch so much as an I went in there when I was just big enough. No, indeed. Yeah, it, it is a demoralizing thing because of all the elements of the Katamari you're losing. But again, that's the other reason I like to play games like this, because sometimes we'll see weird stuff like that. It's the idea of when you're playing and you're with friends, just see weird things. In fact, I remember Edwalk mentioned this. Actually, no, I remember, I was actually watching a um, video I took of this a little while, when uh, you guys were playing uh, Castle Crashers, the Switch version, and there was a situation where you're on one level, you walk through the, um, you're walking through the grass, there's areas with water. You've never played Castle Crashers, it's a beat-em-up. 
Uh, apparently there's a glitch in the Switch version, which I had never seen when I played it on the 360, which is where I have it, and Xbox One as well. Actually, I have it on this thing, the remastered version. We'll take a look at that sometime. But I remember they were walking through the water, and then they had to go... They had to, like, do a jump off the platform or something. The sprite of the game was still showing that they were in the water, and they tried to jump down, and it wasn't working, and they had to restart it. And I was like... This just seems so strange. I was like, what happened there? But again, that's the fun of stuff like this. You play a game with people, and sometimes these strange things happen, and it's like reacting to what it is, like me going into the pit like that. So, in that way, that kind of reminded me. Or it's, Actually, I'm thinking about, like, the pit of despair. Thinking of, um, I guess going back to Legend of the Hidden Temple, which this is not the first time I've brought that up. But, unfortunately, there's nothing to that I can really... Uh, go into game-wise, at least. At least unless I get the Nickelodeon Guts game for the Super Nintendo. Because then I can at least mention my history of that. I should. Because the part of the other point I do with some of this stuff is that it started with I want to show off games, I want to commiserate with friends, family, and other people who stop by. But also just because I wanted to show off some weird stuff. And to me, really, this game is kind of that, but also just things that maybe you never heard of or stuff you have. So we have that discussion going. So that's why I was like, yeah, there's no other... Twitch stream is going to be showing Nickelodeon Guts for the Super Nintendo off. So, I mean, I kind of want to stand out that way. I don't know, Castle Crashers, but never finished it. Okay, what version did you have it for? Or what console did you have it for? Or did you play it on PC? Because I believe it's on PC as well. Just because I'm curious to see different versions, and I've loved that aspect. And that's the other reason why I'm playing the Xbox One version. I had a choice. I could get this on Switch if I wanted to, or I could have gotten the PS2 version of the original but just, like, alright, I thought it'd be worth a discussion for different versions. PC. Okay. Alright, um, yeah, which I, from what I understand, I think the, the PC version of that is pretty comparable to the other ones. Although maybe it looks better, feasibly you probably run 60 FPS on it in ways you... Well, actually, no, I think it did run on a 60, even on the 360 when it first came out. Because it first came on 360 in 2008. Man, that feels like it's been forever ago. Yeah. Yes, wait, I'm kind of talking not so much about the Katamari game we're watching. But that's kind of how some of these things work. And also the idea of, alright, I've explained to you what I'm doing. I'm rolling up the items I'm seeing. So it's basically just when I get to things bigger and better. And, yeah, watch out for the cat there. At least now. But again, later we can then roll up the cat. And have some, uh, I guess, sadistic fun if you're a dog person. And, uh, extreme sadness if you're anyone else. Alright, yeah, that's not good. Let's pick up the tissues. I guess you might need a tissue when we roll up the cats. Because, yeah, we'll be rolling up the cats. Or those, uh, or everything. I mean, could feasibly, the other thing I guess I could do is just be reading off everything I'm seeing, but I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. There's too many and it's going too fast. Alright, so 5 minutes, 14 seconds, we got this. Which admittingly is not great as far as speed is concerned, but, I mean, I made the quota I needed. By the way, I don't know if we're gonna see this, but in case we don't, if you, if, say, 9 minutes passes and I don't hit that, uh, size, I'll get the- the king will be really angry at me, he'll shoot lightning out of his eyes, and then he'll say, um, uh, try- what was the line? Oh, right, it's, um, it's not your fault, it's our fault for believing in you. Which actually, I think, was the, uh, tagline that, uh, Electronic Game Monthly used when they trashed Beautiful Katamari, actually. But, um, that's another story. Ugh. Actually, I guess then, going to that a little bit as far as other versions of this game, for those of you who played it, would you say that the original Katamari Damacy is your favorite, or are there other versions of it that you think are the best ones? Whether it's for newcomers or for, uh, you know, if you've been playing all of them going back to the original. Let me know. I guess in my case, I'd probably like The King is the Most Disappointed Dad in the World. Yeah, or potentially the most, um, passive-aggressive, abusive, and I think you could feasibly... Okay, you couldn't feasibly. You definitely can read into this game. The idea that it's an allegory of parenting situations where the father's either very passive-aggressive towards their children, if not outright abusive. You can feasibly make that case all you want on this game. But yeah, he's very disappointed and he shows it in this game very vividly in the idea that lightning bolts are coming down to his eyes. But that is definitely quite a sight to see. I mean, if I was going to say what my favorite Katamari game is, I mean, really I've only really played to an extensive degree this one, and we love Katamari on the PS2. I'd probably say Wheel of Katamari only because I think it adds... I mean, they're, in some ways they're both mostly the same, but I think that one also adds some other challenges to kind of make it a little more in-depth. I mean, they really tried everything they could to make it, you know, 
add more. Oh, there we go. And when you do that, I love that sound. But we're going to be equal opportunity, you know, animal abusers, I guess. Pick up the dog and pick up the birds. Yeah, nothing gets by and nothing is going to escape our Katamari ball. Which, again, I love that aspect. So you can be really wonderfully sadistic with this game if you want. So it's something feasible you can play with your children or your children can play and have a lot of fun with. Or you can just be sadistic as hell about it. So it, in that way, it is really, truly a game for all ages. And fun for the whole family, but for different reasons. Let's see, can I get that broom? Or that one over there. Uh, okay, I can get the basics on, but not yet. And that's really the point of the game, if I haven't emphasized that enough. Which is, as you build the Konamari up, you can pick up other things. Eventually, you're picking up the whole damn town and the whole damn world. And it's wonderful. But we have a minute left. Let's get that cat, because it's going to be big. At that point, actually, I guess the strategy then is when you get big like this, you then want to try and find the things that you can pick up. The biggest things you can pick up are what you got. In fact, uh... Okay, get Time for fireworks display. Actually, one thing I didn't find yet is... Uh, can I pick up those signs inside there? Okay, I missed one. One thing I missed, I haven't gotten yet, I have 30 seconds to try and find it, is the presents. I don't know if we're going to be getting all the presents or not. I don't remember if there's an achievement for getting them all in this version, but... Let's see if I can't find it. Maybe up on the table? Alright. There we go. Alright, so we got a trophy, feasibly. Or if we're playing this on PS4, then you'd get a trophy for finishing this level, apparently. Because it seems like every level you finish is not a very ambitious achievement list, in all honesty. But that's fine. I mean, for the purpose of unlocking it, it's like, well, alright, I'll play it that way. Or if you feasibly want easy achievements for certain things, then this might be a good choice as well. I mean, basically, if you're one of those people who bought Shrek the Third or rented Shrek the Third on the 360, or uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, The Burning Earth, and got the achievements in five minutes by pressing the X button repeatedly. I'm not joking, you can do that in that game. Alright, so there we go. We got 86 centimeters, 9 millimeters. We collected 525 objects, and mostly we got Japanese food. So yeah, keeping with the food idea. They were Japanese Fritos, perhaps. Alright, mostly cooking stuff as well, and then fruit. Actually, no, it's a tie between cooking and fruit. And the earth is full of things, so we'll release. First time outside is 30 points for completing Make a Star 3. Alright, so what's next? ねえねえ、さっき、テレビで星がなくなったって言ってたよ。ほほほ。そんなことがあるものですか。さあ、タクシーが来ましたよ。All right, to be continued. So there you go. Basically, the idea is that the kids are... They sort of have an idea of what's happening here up in the st in the sky we're doing. The parents don't believe them. They say, no, the media's lying. But, um... Well, we know the truth because we're doing it. All right, so what do we have left on our list? Or next on our list? Okay, next is Make a Star 4. I just wanted to see if there's anything else. Because as we're going, we're going to see the, um... I guess everything lay out. Actually, one thing I want to see... I probably quit out of this, but I want to see something... I just want to see if it gives you... Alright, we're skipping this, because we've already seen it. And I'm going to quit this level. I just want to see if this does the thing that, um... Because I thought the original did it. Okay, no, we're not doing this. In fact, let's, uh, quit and hit Y. I thought this had the thing that, um... I guess Wheel of Katamari introduced this. Where when you go to a level you've already completed, A, you get a piece of music for it, and B, you can then use that music wherever you want. Basically, you can pretty much have custom music going on in any stage. But I think in this one... It looks like it bases it around the levels. Alright, so let's see what we're gonna do for making a star four. Buenos dias. Okay, so basically I guess the idea of this is every star we make, the king of all the cosmos, is gonna be giving us a greeting of sorts from all around the world. So yeah, this is probably, I guess probably the most, uh, I guess most geographical game I could play until I can figure what I'm doing with my PC because I do want to show off one of the Carmen San Diego games at some point. Or if I can't, in a while, I'll just say screw it and get one of those 16-bit versions. Alright, have you ever been to Spain? It's our other homeland. So basically, every homeland is the homeland of the King of all the Cosmos and the rest of the family who we're going to meet a little... Oh, no, we'll meet them in the next game, but I guess we have the cousins in this one. We can show those off in the next level, though. Alright, so... Basically telling us the same idea of there's a present down there, let's go to where we are. 
Okay, so it looks like we're back in the house again, but I think we have more areas to go. Yeah, because we have 10 minutes, we need to get to a meter. And uh, that's going to take a while. Uh, let's see what we got. Alright, here we go. Chat, you were mentioning you loved Lonely Rolling Star by Saki Kabata. Well, here you go. I hope you're enjoying and hope, chat, everybody else enjoys too, because this is a terrific piece of music. Especially this song where you have, like, it's like a J-pop kind of mute song, but also with, like, little, um, you know, like, actual sound effects going, even like a telephone ring in certain places. But yeah, have a listen for this. Or to this. Well, I roll up everything and, yeah, I'll try it. Yas, alright, I'm glad you're very happy. I will try to sing during the, uh, I guess during the chorus, but I don't actually know all the words. Alright, so there's Kuma's bear. Actually, Kuma. Wait a minute. Okay, that just made me realize something. That's Kuma's bear. That's a reference to Tekken. Because that's also from Namco. I didn't actually realize that. I've never noticed that before. Actually, that's kind of like when I played, um, or a friend of mine played one of the Tales games. And I saw these, like, metal things that kind of spin around. I was like, those seem like those metal things that are in, um, Xevious. And I was like, I kind of stopped and I was like, No, wait, they are! I mean, this is a Namco game. So it's like, they're cross-fertilizing their other franchises, weirdly. Alright, here we go. Ugh. Kuma just means bear. That's true, but there is a bear name in Japanese, that's true. But there is a bear in Tekken called Kuma, so there is that as well. Here we go. It's good stuff. I just really know that part of it. It's, this is great music. And this is a great choice, by the way, as far as uh, Ed Walk and Mickey Rich mentioning that. As far as being a good choice, it is a terrific choice. I'm picking up those mice. Yeah, instead of getting decon, just get a Katamari ball. We'll take care of them that way, and uh, we even get we even uh, take care of everything as far as you know the potential mess that comes of that. Ugh. Something's coming, which I think is the bear. The mice. Oh, okay, no, the bear. Or Koop. Wait, it was Kuma's bear, right? Yo, because it says like Kuma's bear, so it's like bear's bear. Okay, so there you go. Also being veiled element of Tekken, which actually, I guess here's the other thing. I guess when I mention games of a franchise or something like that, it might be an idea to pull one of those out. I guess in my case, I have Tekken two and three for PlayStation, so those would be the ones I do. All right, but we can go outside or go into the yard. Well, there are the animals, but we'll be able to take care of them, don't you worry. I want to go and get those magnets, though, if I can. The number counter. Yeah, I want to get that. 20 centimeters. Yeah, I wanted to get the watermelon. Or, um, for any of you Rockers Modern Life fans out there, I smell melon. I'm playing a lot of Enter the Gungeon. Yeah, I've heard that game is very good. Actually, no, a friend of mine actually was showing that. Showing me that. Actually, I think, um, Fedorov also showed me that game. I kind of wanted to play that. It's That's that roguelike game that's kind of like, um... Exploring a dungeon and it's getting insanely difficult. I know they released a sequel, Exit the Gungeon, I believe it was, uh, about a, a year ago, I think. It looked like a lot of fun. Another one, I believe that's Control Dual Analog as well when you're playing with controller, am I right? That's that's definitely one I could take a look at and pick up. Although, what version would you re recommend me play? Because I know that's also in a bunch of systems. All right, well, we have another uh, meter gate, so let's go or centimeter gate, so let's go through that with 20 centimeters to. Find what's underneath the porch. Yep, that was me, yes. Okay, yeah! <laughs> Another me getting stuck. But thankfully, this is not a game that's programmed badly in the sense that you'll be stuck and you have to, like, reset or the game will crash. I just hope we don't have a crash situation. I'm just- the only reason I'm wondering is because I was reminded of one of the last times I played a, um, classic game through the Xbox One for a collection or a re-release, which is why I did Mega Man 7. The game crashed. I think 30 minutes in, I just started all over again. 
I have PS4, it's free now. I enjoy losing a lot or cheating as far as Enter the Gungeon. Okay. Yeah, I said, I don't have the PS4. That's my girlfriend who has that. So in my case, I'd probably get it on the, on this or on Switch. Or feasibly on PC if I can... I mean, for showing off, I'd want to show stuff off on PC. I just gotta figure that out. I just gotta sit down and get the idea of it. I don't know if it's gonna need another laptop potentially or not. The point of what I want to do is I want to connect it to the television. I guess maybe Chad, if you guys have any ideas of how I can do this, technologically speaking, while I try to get through that, is I want to have it on the television because I'm connecting it to my game console with an HDMI, and then it's going into the device and then the mic and all that set up. But I also, when I'm showing it on the TV, I don't want to necessarily hear my voice echoing for the purpose of... It's going to sound horrible for you guys on the other end. I went back to some of my videos where it does that, like at the beginning when I first started, which is also why I bought this nice new uh, Samsung G-Track Pro mic for it. But when that happens, I want to make sure that it's like, well, I don't have that going because it'll be distracting to me, it'll be distracting to you because like you'll hear an echo. You'll hear me saying the same thing more than once. Whereas with this mic, that's not happening. So if I can figure something that, it's probably like an audio splitting thing, if not just getting a new um, or another laptop or the other thing, and this is going to come semi-soon, I think, hope. My girlfriend wants in, in on this, and there's certain games we're going to be playing together she wants to be involved in, particularly when we do Mega Man X3. I'm actually planning on doing something with that. We actually were planning doing something I usually don't do, which is cut the feed at one point for a commercial break for the purpose of showing off not just the Super Nintendo version, but the Sega Saturn version for a bit of variety, and we're just going to play one of them. It's too bad they're giving away 10 games for free on the place. Oh, right, because they're doing that thing for the PlayStation 4. They're giving away... I saw that. And I think it's applying to PS5 as well, or I think it's some stuff that feasibly has an upgrade for PS5 going to. So, yeah, what other things are they offering? I guess Under the Gungeon's one of them. But what else do they have on dock for that? Let me tell my girlfriend about that, because I think she just was able to find a PS5. I mean, in my case, I'm going for Series X because I got back with compatible stuff through this 360 and original Xbox that I want to run amazingly. That, and they're so damn hard to get. But, um, well, yesterday I was able to get one of those Aster City Minis that Blue to Run put out. They put only 3,500 of those on order, so, like, I was able to get that thing. So I was like, yeah, screw the Xbox Series X right now. Or even the PS5. I mean, I think that was a good smoke screen. Being able to, you know, take advantage of that and get this, you know, weird Sega device that's basically a uh, classic game compilation, which I definitely want to show that off, especially Virtua Fighter, because it's the, the only, or one of the only arcade perfect ports of it that's ever come out. Alright, we got 50 centimeters, a little late coming out to the streets, but we're in the streets, and I remember this part, go around, pick up the bowls, the hats, and, well, we'll don't worry, don't worry, little girl, we'll be getting you later, and your backpack. I should get the backpack first, so then we can roll up the girl soon. I think it's about 1 meter, 15 centimeters when you can start rolling people up, or yelling up uh, the kitties. But there we go. Again, the scale, and I love this. The idea that, yeah, we were going through that house, we were just picking up small stuff, but now we're coming out here, we're gonna be picking up those, uh, you know, fences soon enough. Along with the, um, the cats are on the, I call them an ox carriage, something that's like the wheel about. You know the thing when you have, um... When you have, like, pets, and, like, they get, like, a leg injury or something, they go to the vet, they put them in, or they put them in the Elizabethan collar so they don't eat at the wound, but then they sometimes, like, put a little, um, wheel thing so they can not put weight on their feet. Alright, so... We have soft feel like candy pineapples. Alright, sleeve to our work. Not branded pineapples. I mean, if you have, like, branded fruit stuff, that's where Super Monkey Ball comes in, at least, uh, the ones in the GameCube do. I think, uh, oh, no, game, no, the first one the GameCube does, uh, 2 did not. Which is, I got my girlfriend 2, and actually I bought Banana Blitz, the HD version for this system. Actually, I bought it with this game, actually, because there was a big sale that Best Buy was having. Alright, so we're rolling through the house, we're just picking up all this stuff. Life savings! Alright, I love how they call some of these things the life savings. So I was like, yeah, unfortunately, their, um, life savings are going on, and they're gonna be creating the stars again. But I guess we're doing a service to the universe. Now, picking up... The fences. There we go. And that is how- that- there we go. That is the site you want to see and is the appeal of this game. While I try and find the people because I want to roll them up. You'll be a lonely- a lonely rolling star indeed. People, people, where are you? You know what? Actually, I'm gonna use the jump. Okay, she's right there. 
Now she's running in terror, but we're gonna get her. God, I'm a sadistic little bastard, but that's what this game turns you into. Yeah, first they knock him down, and then... Yo, so Miyoko Taik Takata. Alright, so she's gonna be, um... I guess a worthy sacrifice if you wanna look at it that way and be, again, very sadistic, but, um... Don't worry, they'll... Okay, no, they're not gonna be fine, that's a total lie, but... Again, there we go. Indeed, the Lonely Rolling Star is wonderful. Let's get those pots if I can! And as you get bigger, the camera pulls out. Actually, I think also it does as an effect on this stage in particular, where it gets more, um... Yeah, it starts fading away. Res Infinite, The Witness, Subnautica, Abzu, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Thumper, Paper Beast, and Moss. Those are the games that Sony is offering as freebies. I can speak on Res, at least the, um, well, the HD version of Res. Because that game is amazing, and I have that, I have the 360 version of that, we can show that off sometime, because that is quite a trip. In more reason than one. Alright, we're done with the stage, and we got the Katamari at 1 meter 27 centimeters. Alright, so there you go. If you have PS4, PS5, Res Infinite, The Witness, Subnautica, Obzi, Royce, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Thumper, Paper Beast, and Moss are there for you for free. I mean, assuming that you need to be a uh, PlayStation Plus subscriber for that, or is this free for everyone? Ooh, man, I got another achievement. Housemeister. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Making a star four. We are done with that. Let's see where the story goes next. Alright, the family's going on a trip. I forgot about that. So they're at the airport. Alright, well, again, the parent isn't gonna believe them. Yep, okay, so it does need PlayStation Plus, and I must warn you, some require the VR headset. I guess Res is one of those. Because I know when they released Res for that, they had the element of that. And for that game, I understand it. Actually, you know, let's do something else. I mentioned we could take a look at the cousins. I don't believe there's any differences between the attributes of them, but we do have cousins we could pick. We have, um... Hold on, how'd that work? I hit X. Okay, so that's help for it. That's not what I'm asking, though. Alright, here we go. So I have to get... Alright, that's weird. I have to get, like, the bulbous part of the mushroom on them. Okay, so we have Nick, Johnson, uh, Havana, June, the prince, who I've been, Kuro, Ace... You know what? We're picking Ace because that fits into the game we're doing next week, which is, um... Okay, we good with Ace? Uh, I think we're good. I'm hitting Ace. Don't do anything. Uh... Oh, okay, no, that's working. Oh, wait, no, I gotta hit him. Okay, no, I, di I didn't take him. Alright, we're gonna take Ace because, as I mentioned, next week... You're gonna wanna come back for that because... We got another strange game going... Okay, so like, wait, how, hold on, I'm trying to hit him. Oh, wait. Okay. This is for the two-player, then. Is this the case where I can't use them in, uh, single-player for this one? Okay, you don't need PlayStation Plus to get these, and Res is optional for VR as is Thumper. Okay, that's good, because Res is such a great game, I wouldn't necessarily want that to walk behind something if it's not possible. Okay. All right, so this is for the two-player. Objection! Objection on... Oh, you want me to do, uh, Phoenix Wright? Or is it just something else? I do want to do Phoenix Wright at some point. I'll get the, uh, I have to get the release for this at some point. Alright, so, yeah, I think this is for the two-player. I guess I can't show off the, uh, cousins playing. I thought you could- I think Wheel of Connemore lets you do that. Unless you'll get the constellations. And hear this little piece of music. Alright, there's also Meteor Control. What's that? Uh, it doesn't look like it's doing anything, because I didn't not start on this system. It's not doing anything. Wasn't sure what you were going to play. Okay, um, I'll put that in the list of things to play. That'll be a... If I don't finish this game... If I don't finish this game tonight, we come back to this in about a month. If not, I'll try and see if I can't get one of the... i get that Phoenix Strike collection to play that. But what I'm doing next week for Ace... Oh, okay, that was my thought. Alright, so if I'm doing Ace Attorney, that would be that. But Ace, we're doing next week. We're doing, uh... Slam City with Scotty Pippen for the 32X CD. Oh my god. E Jesus. You're, you're, you're not going to miss that. That is such a strangely bizarre game. It's full motion video, 
basketball from the people who made Night Trap that came out in 1994. Where you can feasibly play against Scottie Pippen, who we're not going to be playing as because that game is hard as anything. And it's insanely hard to play. Alright. So there's something missing. Hold it! Well, that's one way for that. Royal present? No. Alright, so the sky is lacking grace. It doesn't float like a butterfly, sachet like the king, or sting like a bee. If you're a boxing person. Which also reminds me I have to do Fight Night at some point because that game's amazing. Alright, so... To get grace... Okay, I remember this mission. You have to play to get a graceful element by picking up all the swans in the world. Or at least try to, anyway. Gotta get some grace back in the sky. Not that bird down there. Mm. Just taking a bit of my water. Night trap, they find you. Night trap. <laughs> oh god, that's another one. I do have that on Switch. We can show that off at some point. But we're gonna do Slam City Scotty Pippen. It is crazy. And it's also the only 32x CD game I own, of which Night Trap is one of those, but I- or Night Trap is not one of those I own, but it's one that's available as one of the five 32x CD games. We'll get into that next week, and I'll keep Ace Attorney on the docket at some point. Alright. Oh, okay. Alright, so we have seven minutes, we're rolling up the eggs- oh, we're getting this track. We're getting, um, Kaysera Sarah, Let's Roll Up by Charlie Cassay. Which is basically, this is where I think the music in this game really started to hit me. Even, even, I think, actually, no, I'm trying to remember. No, 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 I guess it would have been Lowly Rolling Star, which is her first. We played this on the PS2 before this, but then I hear this, it's like, it's like, Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra kind of idea, like, love ballad, and it is delicious. Even like the, mu the vocals, which are mostly in English for this, and it has like this great, their scatting element, or scat element as far as like the... The styles. I mean, this is honestly one of those games you could feasibly like, do like a music research thesis feasibly on, based on everything it's doing and how it's doing it too. All right, there we go. Yeah, we're picking out the eggs because when they hatch, they turn into swans. And uh, oh yeah, when you hit the mouse trap like that, you get launched, which is a nice inch of detail. Into my life. Let's roll up to make a single star in the sky. It is good stuff. Okay, I could sing this song, sort of, because I'd be able to remember the lyrics. But I'm not gonna sing it much more than that. And I just, again, it's that kind of like jazzy kind of, I guess this isn't exactly big band exactly so much as it's like uh, easy listening. And just like those vocals. I mean, it's as close as I'm going to be able to get to playing a game that has Frank Sinatra, because of course I can't, because otherwise I'm going to be content banned. But this is as close as we can get without it, and I'm also saying I love Frank Sinatra, and just this is playing towards that as well. Alright, so there's Ducklings as well. Also, yeah, there is a little bit of a delay with the camera when you get launched like that, but not too bad. You can still see where you're going, and just roll up all the little duckies, and basically hatch them. It is interesting that they're putting the eggs on the mouse on the mouse traps. Oh no no! Yeah, I'm being very reckless with this. Although that's technically how I tend to play this game to a certain extent, in that of like just roll up like crazy, go there, boom boom, and like doing the quick uh, speedy thing and pulling back and t doing the quick turn. And I guess to go back to like first your point as far as that being very demanding with the dual analog setup. Yeah, I get that and I understand it. And to be fair, this is definitely a game that definitely has a learning curve to that. But I do think that compared to other games I've played where they do a dual analog and it feels really weird or it feels really like, why do this? Sometimes you play a game like that and like, well, it's tempting to say that about EA, saying they put the right analog stick in everything for no reason. And sometimes it's weird. Actually, I know a lot of the Tiger Woods PGA Tour games kind of do that. Actually, I never, even with that one, I never really thought they did the dual analog as well as even something like, um... If you played it, Outlaw Golf for the Xbox and the GameCube, which is like a raunchy variant of like Hot Shots Golf with actually Steve Carell, who was actually kind of sort of unknown at the time doing the voiceover for the announcer. But other than that, like I always felt it weird sometimes to do the right analog stick thing or multi analog stick thing like with that one. But then again, EA's done it well. I mentioned Fight Night, which is terrific. And then this game being another one, where it's like, yeah, it just feels right. But again, maybe it's also because I've been playing this game for about 
how many years has it been then? So it was 2004. I did play it launch year first, so that would be... 17 years. Wow. Okay. And based on what I'm feeling about this version, this Xbox One port of the re-roll release, it seems like it is pretty good as far as how it plays. Even the idea, and this is where I was kind of a little nervous playing this one, because of the fact that on the Xbox One controller, on the Switch controller as well, or the Pro controller for the Switch anyway, the analog sticks are not on the same plane as each other. They're not, like, right next to each other. They're kind of off-center a little. At first I was thinking, well, is that going to be a weird way to play it? But so far it seems like that's not the case. Let me said, I think i got to hurry up because I'm not getting a whole lot of the eggs. Or maybe I am. I mean, you do see that little flower up there in the right on the upper left-hand corner of the screen, that it will get bigger when you get closer towards, I guess, what the 100% is going to be. Yeah, but they hide... Okay, they hide the eggs a lot in here, it seems like. So there's ones there, there's ones in the flower pots. I think there's ones, yeah, up there on the uh, cadenza. We'll hear more of this lovely music. Alright. Also steal their lunch of the egg sushi. Silly Prince, that won't hatch. It's sushi now. Oh, it's all right. Well, it's raw as anything. So there we go. All right. Okay. So I need to go over the pot, over the pan, to get those. Oh, I just missed. Yeah, that's kind of the hard thing because also that jump, by the way, is more just for scouting. It's not for actually, you know, jumping. I think. Chat, let me know about this if I'm not right about this. Wasn't there a Katamari game that came out later where they actually give you like an ability to? do, like, a jump, as if it was a platform game. I thought Katamari Forever did it, but uh, don't quote me on that, and let me know if it's one of the other ones, or if that even happens at all. Because I know that a lot of times Namco wanted to come up with different ways to play this, whether it was running on the PSP with one analog, or one analog stick, which I guess is probably what the simple control for this might be, like, or the touch one on the Vita version. Alright, so let's keep going. Wait, that's weird. I'm picking the eggs up. They're not hatching yet. Oh, wait. Is it? It's on a time limit. I think forever, maybe, which was on the PS3. I Because I remember hearing about that. I think that was after uh, Beautiful Katamari came out. And I didn't have PS3, but I overheard that it was coming out. And you heard that, okay, what were they doing differently over the other releases? And that in case, I was curious. I mean, that would be an interesting mechanic to have them go about with jumping. Or turning it more into platforming elements. Which, I mean, I guess... Because I guess that's the other question. With the release of this one, do we think that Namco Bandai will go back to the series and perhaps give us a new one? Or is it... Because people criticize this franchise, actually, with starring with Beautiful... Well, actually, no, with uh, We Love, even, some people. We're saying that... Is this a concept where the ideas of it are pretty much... They've done everything they can, and they have nowhere to go. But I'm thinking nowadays, maybe not. I would think that... They could come up with some interesting concepts, so I think maybe the release of, well, the Switch version of this a couple years ago, the port of it two years later to PS4 and Xbox One, maybe Namco's getting some ideas. Maybe Namco will come back to this. I'd love to see that, but, um, as of now, I don't think they've announced much. I mean, I guess the closest you're going to get as far as next-gen version of this is playing this on your Series X or playing the PS4 version on your PS5. All right, so we got 49, that's 70%. That's not as great as I would have wanted, but... Okay, so yeah, based upon that, he'll come and he'll say, like, okay, this is just commonplace. Fake Grazer. Okay, do we count for Constellation? But we're released into the sky. Another achievement in pursuit of beauty. Where it make, uh, sinus. Or something, let's see what she says. Okay, so basically the Fe the rise of the phoenix. Gotcha. Okay. Actually, I am liking the fact that the loading is really quick. Because even on a system like that, that this that's not always a guarantee. I mean, if you ever played, and this is one of the reasons I'm going to be happy to get a Series X eventually. If you ever played Final Fantasy 15. The initial load is over a minute, even on the Xbox One X that I'm playing this on. But then that cuts it down to 15 seconds. So that sometimes can be nice to be able to, you know, 
get a better case with loading. Even for something like this, we didn't have loading problems on the PS2 anyway, but just more of a curiosity's sake. Because that's a fascination of mine, if you... that are on multiple systems, they port it somewhere else, what's it look like, what's it run like, what's it play like, and getting those differences. In fact, I remember going back to it when I stream I did about a month ago, when we did Pitfall the Mine Adventure, which was a wonderful playthrough, and I'm working through getting the editing going so we can show off all this stuff. But, until I do that, just, I'll give you an idea of what that is, which was we were going through, it was an interesting case, it was actually, it was Electris and Protorova who showed up in particular, or were active the most. That was an interesting case because they were mentioning their their uh, history with this on, alright, well before then, there's You Are Smart, which I think we heard actually in the first level, that was done by Akitaka to Toyama. But as I was saying, when we did Pitfall the Mind Adventure, that was an interesting case because I was playing the Sega CD version, showing that off. Protorova had experience for it on the Sega Genesis, and then uh, Electverse had experience with the Super Nintendo version, and I learned a lot, actually, on that. I mean, I think they were mentioning certain things they were curious to see about how the sound effects were and how some of the uh, level ordering were changed. But I also learned stuff, too. I think they were mentioning to me, like, when you fight bosses in that game, the Super Nintendo version does not have, like, the boss health meter. Which I didn't know, and I love that idea. I love that idea of being able to share elements of games, particularly when they're on other systems, and people played them on something different. So that was another interesting case, which I guess goes to why I'm potentially asking questions on the Katamari Damacy reroll. Although, I have played the Switch version a little. It seems mostly the same to me. I mean, I guess, if I were to guess, I would guess it runs at... I don't know if it runs at 1080p on the Switch. I'm pretty sure it runs at 1080p on this, or at least it better, considering that we're on the Xbox One X, where, whereas the actual, the normal base Xbox One always had problems doing that, run it at 1080p, and I don't know why that was. But, I mean, I would think this is run at 1080p, and maybe the Switch version doesn't, but I know there are Switch games that do run at 1080p. I know, I believe, uh, I think Mario, uh, Super Mario uh, Odyssey is a game like that. That's more of a tech talk thing, but also a fascination on that, because I guess we were playing this at... Yeah, it was on the PS2. I'm trying to remember, did that have progressive scan on the PS2? Because I, I have the cables to show it off that way. And actually, my girlfriend has the PS2 version, so I get an idea to it, but I don't remember how it was, but definitely it's a higher screen resolution now. And I guess uh, native widescreen as well. That being said, there is something to be able to be playing like a game like this in the old 4x3 ratio on your old CRT television. But I think for the purpose of streaming, actually... You have to, okay, okay, no, I can't show that off that way because none of the inputs I have on my old CRT have uh, HDMI. I think there may be a few that do, but not many. Okay, I can pick up the new driver signs, which I want to do because I want to get this bigger. They give me a lot of time and... I definitely want to get myself going a little more. And again, that also brings up more stuff for the discussion. So I'll open it up to the floor for chat is concerned. So let me know what you're thinking about what you're seeing or anything you want to mention as far as this game, the Konamari series, or other elements of gaming that are of interest or that you're playing. Definitely like the idea of hearing about some of the suggestions I hear in there. Freebies if you own the PlayStation 4 or 5 and anything else. So yeah, have at it. The floor is yours. I'll try and get off the stairs and not crash too much. Let's get those bottles of... Okay, I can't get those yet. That's... Okay, I can get the shoes. Okay, now I can get the soy sauce. There we go. The not Kikoman's soy sauce. Although, it sure looks like it. In fact, let me park back there. Yeah, the logo looks a lot like it. If you ever go to the store, you see the Kikoman's brand, which is basically the soy sauce du jour. The one that everyone knows the brand of, at least. But yeah, there we go. Alright, so now I got that, and so I can go on the street easier and pick up stuff. Hopefully the paint can, or the, the pineapple can. Alright. Really? Hold on. I, let me go back up to the not Turbo Graphics 16 up there, because I thought I could pull the controller off. Or the not Famicom. Oh yeah, that's the game 2600. All right, so it's okay. So it's more like the so it's like a fusion of the Turbo Graphics 16, the Famicom, and the Atari 2600. Who knew? 
Alright, so let me get that up, so because I guess I can't pick the game console up yet. Okay, pick these up. There we go. The nice cookie tins. Can't get the doggies yet. Yes! Oh, 45 centimeters, we make it bigger than that. Indeed, he is right. And sometimes they will shift the camera to point to certain areas that you can go when it's like a larger level. In fact, this is the first one. What is your favorite Japanese food? Hmm. That's a good question. Alright, let me give it a think. Um... It's funny, I don't... Okay, I sometimes will eat some Japanese food. It's the stuff I can get my hands on. I guess in a lot of ways, I guess I would think stuff like... I guess like teriyaki stuff. Particularly when you put that on, like, meat of some sort, that's always tasty. I know I've actually had, like, some Japanese snacks my girlfriend picked up. Stuff like, uh, Pocky I thought was interesting. Although, the thing about Pocky was, was strange that... I, I was attracted to the idea of its, um... I guess the fruit flavor. But then I realized it's almost like, um... Like a wafer cracker, but not quite. Something in between that and, like, a... I don't know, like a saltine or something. With that at the end, so... I'm not going to say I felt cheated by it, but it seems it's something that was kind of different than I expected, but it was still good. I mean, I guess the other thing is, I sometimes will, am, can go for a bit of sushi in some cases, depending on what my mood is. There are definitely some good variances of it, particularly like the sashimi variances. Again, fitting because we're picking up all this food and uh, like the cabbage in the field. And basically the cow as well, so we can get uh, that going. Or actually... That's another thing. I don't know if I've had it, but my girlfriend has mentioned this. She mentioned how good, um... What was this? I was going Kobe beef. I think I've had that, but she's saying this, the really, this really expensive variant. Uh, Wagyu, I believe it is. I don't know if chat you're familiar with that. But from what I understand, it's extremely expensive, but it's also something that... It can be very delicious when you make it, particularly how you make it. Meyer stands also apparently something if you like your meat rare or medium rare, that it's even better. Personally, I'm more of a medium to medium well person, but I don't know necessarily if that would be to that. I mean, I guess that would be my answer off the top of my head. I guess then, Edwalk, what is your take on that? Just raise the question. I'll uh, ask you what's going on while we go into the busy supermarket shopping area and, uh, Cause havoc. Oh, yeah, we can pick up people now. Let me go back and get the kid. All right, there we go. Can we pick up more people? All right, yeah, the adults are more. We had some American Wagyu today in our hot pot. Okay, how was that? I can imagine that being something that is very tasty, particularly when you... depending on how you make it. I get a fitting to be able to discuss this at the supermarket area. Yeah, something's coming, but I need to get those people. Strike. Actually, no, that wasn't a strike. That was a spare. It was amazing. Okay. I'll definitely have to take that into account. Because, again, my girlfriend mentioned this. She's a big one as far as cooking, as far as cuisine elements anyway. She kind of gets me, gives me the hookup when it comes to stuff like that. I'll have to ask her about that and ask her, um, what's going on. Then again, she might be in the chat tonight. Who knows? I don't know if she's busy tonight or what. But at some point, I think, again, she'll be showing up for these discussions at some point, or actually in the chat. In fact, I think I was kind of, in a sense, begging her for Shadow the Hedgehog in a couple of weeks when I do that. Which is gonna be, I play through one element of the story, you guys tell me where I'm going for it, and then we play the last story. It's expensive though, yes. That I've heard, I think it's like, what? 80, 90 dollars for, like a, not an ounce, it's not that crazy, but I know it's it's because of how it's made, and I think it's because of how specific it is that that's why it costs so much. But again, for that, you're also getting a lot of quality. Also, we're getting people... Alright, yeah. You can tell the people, you can pick up, because they'll either be screaming, running away, or they'll have the little thing over their heads. Alright, the same place we took our first swim ever in this very place. Sorry, so he's reminiscing on uh, our childhood and his biggest memories of him and his wife from the next game. For the real stuff, yes, it is that expensive. At some point, I will have to get to that. Soon enough. Actually, I don't know... I'm trying to remember if that even existed when this game was around, although... I mean, it probably did. I wouldn't think that there's like, oh, there's a different, uh... 
strand of beef that was not around 16, 17 years ago. Okay, so I can't get the bike messenger yet. But I can get the bikes! And actually, that kind of makes things a little more difficult because of, as I mentioned, your oblong. So yeah, it's kind of going up like that when you have the bike going. And so it kind of makes it a little hard to maneuver, but eventually you go all right. And okay, I can't get that yet. Okay, so I'm picking people up that I can't see, and then that young boy. Alright, so yeah, it's funny to be seeing the idea that, yeah, we had this nice crowded bustling market, and now we have all these people who are going to become our star. And they're just screaming and, you know, writhing to get out. Again, this is such a wonderfully sadistic game that, again, you can play with your children. This is not like the Saw game. This is not like, um, Manhunt. This is not something like that, where it's like, Sadistic is all hell, and you don't want your children anywhere near it. Or even certain adults near it, if you're sensitive to that, or don't want to have that kind of experience. But this game, no. There we go. I think we hit the... Okay, no, the target was, uh, one and a half meters. Okay, I didn't pay attention. Because sometimes that's what happens to me when I play this game. I'll get so in the moment of just... causing havoc and picking stuff up. Okay, picking up that guy who's singing. Actually, speaking of singing... Uh, come on, Mr. Businessman, we want you in the Katamari. Right, the musician in the concert, yeah. Mr., um... I guess he has the mohawk. I'm trying to think if that might be a music reference of some sort. It might be. If you think it is, Chad, help me out. Or if you know it is, Chad, help me out. Or let me know if there's anything else about... Oh, cute couple, nice roll-up. Oh, Christ, and I'm getting people knocked off, and they are actually cooked through the floor, so I don't know if that's a worse fate than going into the star. But indeed, you are smart to be rolling them up, or I am smart, or whoever's playing this game is smart. There's another person. I'm not leaving anybody. I just love that. It's just... it is amazing. Alright, so we got Grandpa, we got... Uh, who's that? Shigeru Kido. Yeah, one thing we can't roll up yet is that vending machine, but I think we're going to be able to... In fact, we can go through the market now and get some of these storefronts, I think. But sometimes you have to be very specific when you hit them on the side. All right. All right. All right, there's some guy on the telephone pole or doing work. He comes down. Yeah, now you're coming with me, Mr. Utility Worker. As well as, uh, John the Fisherman and other ones. Or Shogo Ureda, I believe it was, the Fisherman. There's a kitty car, there's there's him. Okay, there's a person who is trying to fix this stage. Yeah, you're not fixing that stage. Home improvement, all right. But not uh, Tim Tim Allen. And I don't have, by the way, don't, I, there is a game of Home Improvement I can play on the Super Nintendo, but I don't have it. I hear it's horrible, but I am also in the business of playing or taking a look at terrible games. In fact, that's the idea of what I sometimes do with Bad Game Thursday. Next week is going to be a Bad Game Saturday or a Sucky Game Saturday, however you want to put it. We can come up with a name that way for it, but that's what Slam City with Scottie Pippen's going to be. And at some point, other games. In fact, I even just bought Batman Forever for the Super Nintendo because it was part of a lot that came with Top Gear, which, uh, Black First, I know you wanted to see. I have it. We'll play it at some point. It'll be on my docket. I played it to test it. It worked nicely. And it was, first impressions for having not grown up on it, it was nice to see. It was an uh, interesting case of seeing that kind of scrolling racing game from 1990... If they said 1992, but it looks like it was also 91 when Gremlin developed it for Kemco, who published. I'd definitely be curious to show that game off and uh, kind of play more into it, because it was pretty nice. And even like the technical elements of how its Mode 7 graphics were working is fascinating. Alright, there's another fisherman. we got to get him. He's coming with us. Alright, so I think we cleared out the entire, uh, place, unless there's other people up here, which I'm not gonna be able to get, we'll see. Alright, no, little girl, you're coming with me! Oh, no, you're not, so, alright, she's been spared. Okay, so time's up, so we have two meters, 65 centimeters, and two millimeters. There we go. A nice roll-up of people and citizens in a town, and a nice discussion of Japanese food and other food items. All right. Did that awfully fast hitting the goal. Yeah, they will tell you, by the way, when you hit the uh, target score they give you, the target size, quickly. All right, thing that you click the most of is the vegetables, followed by drinks and uh, fitting number three, Japanese food. 
Now, it's going in the sky along with all those people, and we get an achievement for doing that. Town Sweeper! Okay! In more ways than one, they mean that. Wow. Okay, also, what was that D-pad up thing? Oh, right, it's a constellation, I think. We're back on playing with the kitties on vacation. Let's see what they have to say. Oh, I forgot about that. I was like, yeah, he looks and he's like, he sees the king of all the cosmos. So I guess in that way it's almost like Santa Claus or like, um... I don't know, like, some of the Giants things. Or if you ever saw Pete's Dragon, either the original movie from Disney or the amazing, amazing remake from about five years ago, nobody can see the dragon until they believe it, so... Or, or I guess, uh, going back to Santa Claus, the idea of, like, on Futurama is they like, Why well, don't believe in Santa Claus? Come on, everyone. If you don't believe in him, he can't hurt you. Uh, speaking of which, also, there is a game based on Futurama that is extremely expensive, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show that off. Unless I put down a pretty huge sum of money on it. We're talking over $200 for that, and that's a PS2 Xbox game that costs that much, so that's a shock right there. Alright, so we're gonna do another special mission, what do we got here? So our sky is was not graceful, it's also not gorgeous. So in order to make it gorgeous, we're gonna go down and get what's here. Alright, so what do we got? Crowns everywhere. Okay, so we gotta roll off the crowns. Fitting for the king of all the cosmos to get them. Get as many as you can, get a crown covered, and do it in... Nine minutes. Actually, one thing I'm missing, unless I'm hitting A over it, and it's not playing at the... DING! The little, like, uh, music sting. Alright. I'll check that next level. Here we go. Here is my favorite piece of music in this game. Katamari... What was it? Uh, Katamari Taino. It's done by... Yui Asaka. I love this track so much. I love the music of it, the style of the jazz of it. It is terrific, terrific stuff. <laughs> if you've never heard this, I mean, I'm, I know people in the chat have played this game. There's some people who played it. If you haven't heard this music, have a listen. This is just lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I'm not going to be completely silent the whole time, but I just love this song so much. The vocals, the instrumentation, the middle parts, how they add instruments, adding layers onto it. It is just terrific. I'll, I'll highlight some of those points when we get to them. They put the crowns on top of everything. It's almost as if they all got those ones from Burger King. These are definitely nicer. Apparently the PlayStation 3, Vita, and PSP stores are shutting down. Alright, well, I may as well go into that a little bit then. I've heard that. I don't... I don't... Did they actually confirm that? I've heard contrasting reports, but it is something that's making me concerned. It's also something that's making me want to get a PS3 right away. Also, we're picking up graffiti and chalk drawings on the ground. But, um... If that's the case, I kind of want to do that just to get cheaper access to some of the stuff that's up there. Particularly, like, the PlayStation Classic stuff, so I'm tempted to do that just to get an idea when they, you know, give the idea that they're going to be pulling the trigger on that one. It's been a while, so I mean, I guess I get it, but still, there's going to be a lot potentially lost. Oh, yeah, the saxophone here, oh my god, it's so wonderful. That saxophone, oh my god, it is wonderful. I mean, maybe I'm a sucker for the saxophone anyway, but especially like that, I mean... 
I mean, there's a reason why they call it that sexy jazz, generally. It is just wonderful. In this game, but just the idea of that in general, and it just sounds delicious. Especially as they're adding, like, layers to it as it goes along. Or when they're adding, like, the horns here, the French horns, they do... do, 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 do. Again, you, I, you could do a, a thesis on this. I'd like to think there's somebody out there with a PhD in, like, music studies or something like that who's done to the soundtrack. I hope so, because it's wonderful. To go back to that thing on the PS3 Vita and PSP store shutting down, yeah, that is a concern of me just because I'm thinking some of those ways are going to be easy ways of me forgetting some of the games that are on there and cheaper fees than getting them in their original form. I know Klonoa from the PS1 is up there for the PS3 to get, where it's six bucks where normally it's like 200 by its normal case. In that case, it becomes an economic thing. It's like, well, all right, it costs money for a PS3, but... Then again, I can also then rationalize that by saying, like, oh yeah, for that. And I was thinking about that anyway, just for the purpose of some stuff I could show off. God of Forever being an example of that. Metal Gear Solid 4 is another example. So it is something I've been toying with at some juncture. Uh, yeah, it's sometimes hard to get some of the things that are, like, on walls like that. Sometimes the weird case is, you know, you have to get bigger to pick up the thing in there. Something about patents and people speculating it might be backwards compatibility. So do you believe then, interesting question, do you believe then for PS5 that Sony is going to go more all in on the backwards compatibility than they did on the PS4? Because the PS4, if you don't know, I mean, it's funny, I'm speaking to this having not owned a PlayStation 4, but having someone, and dating someone who does, and on people who have them too. But the only way backwards compatibility worked on that system is if you have a PlayStation Now account, or if, like, they did a re-release of something. Whereas on the PS3, it was native to PS1, some were native to PS2, then there's some that were software emulation, and then it's got rid of the PS2 element of it altogether. So do you think, then, Sony is going to do that? I'd love to see that, so that you can have more options for that. And actually, if you're mentioning that, you've mentioned, uh, Electrus, you have... Like, PlayStation Now, I thought you said you mentioned that at one point. I'm curious about this. You honestly doubt it. You don't think they're going to? I hope not. I'd love to see that just for the purpose of... And maybe that's the other thing I like to mention this, and that's where we did Super Mario Bros. 35 last week, which you're not going to have for much longer. The idea of what's, um, you know, game preservation. And to be fair, I mean, I guess it's not preservation in the sense that, okay, you can still buy a copy of some of this stuff, and not all of it is Klonoa prices. I mean, they have stuff up there that's cheap as is, but that one being really expensive, the Misadventures of Tron Bond being insanely expensive and going up, um, and some other cases to that. Let's go into town, because I think we can get more crowns that way. And then here comes the saxophone again. I would like the purpose of some of those things, but again, I'm also assuming that it's also going to be one of those things where I guess people are going to be, like, doing the run-through. I think they should. Yeah, I would agree, but I mean, I know, let's not deny this, it's, look, video gaming is, is to a certain extent, it's gonna be a business. We can sit here and say the things we want, and hoping for it, I get that. And unfortunately, they have to be in the tough position of having to rationalize that from a business standpoint. I would think they could, though, in this case, because, and honestly, I think Microsoft, kind of, in a weird way, I think, kind of pushed, or made Sony t kind of push for that more with PS5, because, for... All, look, on the last generation of systems, I'm playing the third place system. The Switch and the PS4 sold way better than the Xbox One. The Xbox One shot itself in the foot right out the gate because it basically said, you have to have online all the time. And people said, what the hell is wrong with you? We're not going to buy your system. And they pulled back. But one thing Microsoft did absolutely right for that system that I wasn't sure they would and they didn't initially have it was the backwards compatibility concept, where it's like, yeah, we're giving you all these ancient games that you had on the original Xbox and 360 playable on this, and we're enhancing them with a better graphics. And now with the Series X, they're saying, on board with the console, you're going to be able to play games, and it's going to be able to tap into whatever frame rate level they were going for when it was on the old system, which is why I've mentioned this about a thousand times on this. Sonic Unleashed runs at horrible frame rates on every system in particular. Well, at least every one for the next-gen one, or the then-next-gen for 360 and PS3. But it was targeting 30 FPS. On Series X, it hits 30 FPS for the first time. So you play that game 
perfectly that way for the first time in like 12, 13 years. And I think Sony looked at that and they were saying, yeah, we want to make it so that like people have this back catalog and it also incentivizes people to then buy the next system of theirs. Yeah, I know people who have PlayStation systems have owned all of them because like, hey, I have a long history of stuff. And the same with PS5 now. Like, hey, I got stuff from PS4. I can play on this. I can upgrade it and make it better or have it look better. I mean, one of my coworkers, I think, he plays Control by um, Remedy a lot. And he was saying, like, I have base PS4. He was looking for a PS5. He got one. And I said, ooh, you're in for a treat playing that thing on the new system. And he came back and was like, yeah, it's amazing. It's like night and day going to that. I mean, it's almost that idea of, like, potentially fixing broken games and really think about it as far as a frame rate concept. Which is very appealing to me. While also holding those games for a future generation, especially because, I guess going back to that, there was another thing I read this week, as far as gaming element, it goes to classic gaming too. Um, Tecmo Koei is bringing out the Ninja Gaiden classic collection, or the Ninja Gaiden, uh, um, I don't know what the name of it is. Uh, the Master, the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. They're bringing that out in a couple months. They said in interviews, people were saying, you're taking Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1 and 2 from the PlayStation 3, you're not taking Ninja Gaiden Black from the original Xbox, you're not taking Ninja Gaiden 2 from the 360, why? They came back and they said, and some people are questioning whether this is true or not, they said the assets of the game on the old systems, they apparently can't salvage them. I don't know if that's the case or not. Okay, I only got about half of these things, so... And he's not going to be too happy, but he'll he'll deal. And I'll get an achievement. Collector of crowns for 30 points. Make Corona, Corona Borealis. Like Aurora Borealis. So romantic. Well, I mean, this game, there's kind of like a romantic element to it. But as I was saying with the Ninja Gaiden uh, Master Collection, they're saying that was not salvageable, apparently. Apparently they couldn't go back to the original on the Xbox or the, um, well, the Xbox in that case, and use that version. So, it got me thinking of, I don't know necessarily if, like, digital releases, like some stuff that's on the PlayStation 3 and Vita and all that stuff, is a question of, you know, saving it, or it's like Panzer Good Saga, the source code that is lost. They have to rebuild that entire game from scratch. But it does kind of make you wonder, like, is that part of it, and is that potentially being lost? All right. Assalamu alaikum. All right, so we're going to the Arabian Peninsula, or he did. All right, so gave my present away. I'm not getting many presents I'm noticing on this. But I guess I'll have to keep looking. Actually, you know what? Okay, I take that back. I was saying when he's doing the talking like this, I can start walking or rolling without him uh, while he's talking like that, and then he re reacts. I think that's only in We Love Katamari, so I guess I was wrong. Alright, three meters in 11 minutes. Let's see what you can do. Ah, and we're hearing, um... Katamari Mambo by, um... Nobuo Matsubara and Sakamoto-chan. Again, I'm going based on the artist stuff I have, because I have all the music on my iPod, and I made sure to get all the artist information down for this game, because it's great. Or any, uh, game music I have. Alright, so we can pick up some mayo and pumpkins, or not the pumpkin yet. As I was saying, though, I mean, it does kind of get me wondering as far as, you know, holding on to that. And that, I guess, because I mentioned this before, this is mostly a retro gaming show, but that's not to say, no, I'm not going to do newer stuff. I mean, technically I'm doing this game that came out three months ago, even though it's a re-release or a remaster of a 2004 release for the PS2. But even still, it does kind of get me wondering, and I like talking about this, and all of you bringing it up, about like what's the idea of classic gaming. And again, one other thing, I guess, is what does it necessarily mean to be a gamer? What does it mean to our fandom? Uh, why did we get into this hobby in the first place? And what is it when we really want to hold on to something? And I know I mentioned that with like physical releases of things, and people want to hold on to those things, like when the Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, uh, Complete Collection, or Complete Edition, I keep saying Complete Collection on that one, was released, Limited Run did a, a physical, and people were like, thank God, because otherwise this thing gets delisted again because of its license. I mean, 
I bought it for that very reason. Like, no way in hell that game's getting away from me again. So I think it's that idea that people who love games or love certain games, even games that maybe people haven't played. Because I'm getting an interesting idea with this game. There's a cross-section of the chat who knows this game by heart and loves them doing it and requested it. And again, thank you very much for that. And thank you again for showing up and watching. I, it means the world to me. But other people have never played it. So then they're thinking, like, well, what's the fuss of this game all about? And having a shared experience, whether it's us looking at it for the first time or having played it for years. And so I think in that way, that's kind of what I focus on with this stream and this concept. And also looking at the idea of the retro gaming elements and wanting to hold on to this stuff. Because I can think of stuff I have, I mean, in my collection of, like... Not even necessarily becomes, because it becomes expensive, just because, like, I want to hold on to some of this stuff for dear life. I mean, the thought of, alright, some of this stuff is going to be ever, there forever, digitally speaking. I mean, certainly there's certain ways to go about taking the digital stuff, storing it potentially. But also, in my case, I'll sometimes go digital for something that's like, oh, there's a cost reason. I mean, paying six bucks for Klonoa instead of 200, that just makes sense. Paying, uh, going on a shopping spree on the Wii when the eShop sh- or the- the Wii shop closed down. I mean, what are you gonna do if you're gonna buy an Ironclad for the TurboGrafx CD? Or no, the, uh, Neo Geo CD. Are you gonna pay $9 for it on the Wii Virtual Console, or are you gonna pay over a thousand for it in its original form? The answer is, I never played this game before, you bet you're gonna be paying nine bucks only, if you're curious. So sometimes that makes sense, but if you have some of these things, like, you're gonna wanna cling to them for dear life. Just because, like, well, I want to hold on to this and I want to come back to this game at some point. Because, again, that goes into the idea of why to game. Collecting, but also having all these unique experiences of which Katamari Damashi is definitely one of those. I mean, when I remember when this came out, I said, the best compliment I think you could play, give this game, and even sort of now, even though there's certain games that kind of pulled for it vaguely, like, I know the um, Showtime mode of Burn Up Paradise pulled from this a little, but the best compliment I think you could say about this game is that in a lot of ways, I can't really think of anything else I've played like this. Even the idea of, like, pretty much being like a snowball simulator of, you know, rolling the ball around, picking up and getting bigger. I've seen stuff like Yoshi's Island where it has, like, sections of that. But turning that into a gameplay concept and then exploring the idea of, I guess, a veiled concept about consumerism because there's all this stuff on the earth. They keep saying that every level. And then the idea of, like, this uh, father-son relationship that the prince is working through by doing a solid for his dad after he had a raucous night out. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely unique, and it really makes it into this kind of great permanent idea. And something that, again, the question of can games be art or are they, I'd say something like this, yes, you get that passion. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this, the fact that they turn this into this game on the back of just a simple Oh yeah, we have a student project we're like spending less than a million dollars making. And you can clearly tell that love out of this game, and it shines through. And that's one of the best experiences you can have with the game. When you play it, you can tell the people who made it, loved what they were doing, loved making it, and they're, they're, they want you to have as much fun as they did going on. But now we're on the beach, which is definitely, just in case, they got Mama's son and the Watermelon Boy and all the people. Ah, uh, there we go, the nice swan, uh, boat, which I love picking those up while I pick up the nice little bikini girls. <clears throat> and the surfer dudes as well. Alright, but some people are too big to pick up still. We're also picking up, like, telephones and stuff. Okay, the fat businessman. Alright, at this point, usually, when you get to the point where you can pick up people, you want to pick up people. Because, again, they're going to help you out to get your Katamari bigger, and we're almost at three meters. I also just love the way they lay out some of the stages here. It's like, yeah, they just put a ramp there that are like, oh yeah, I can launch off of that and just get all the melons in a row. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let me uh, line up. Do the roll. There we go. And then crash into the tree. I think we can pick up the uh, sumo guys over there. All right, we can knock him down at least. All right, the judo guys, never mind. All right, so we're almost there. I think we can... Okay, not, not yet. We can pick up the park benches. Oh, yeah, and the Lotus Leaf. They were born in Lotus Lands, indeed. Any fans of Rush, the uh, Canadian progressive rock band might understand that one. All right, 
there's another uh, guy. Actually, it's uh, oh, it's like a lucha wrestler. It's like I'm thinking of um, if you're familiar with the Angry Beavers. Okay, his name's Green X, but I think like El Grapadora, if you ever are familiar with that show, which is a very interesting and very strange show that kind of is right up my alley. It's also probably one of the best depictions of uh, the relationship between a relationship between brothers that I've ever seen. Also, just being so weird and also having such a great understanding of like B movies, which is terrific. Oh yeah, that's the other detail. When you go into the water, the prince, I guess, can't breathe underwater, so he has the little the little snorkel he puts on. All right, so we have four minutes left. I think we should be almost there. Here we go. The, the bales of hail help me, and that guy. There we go. I love that show. All right, so we have a fan. There, weirdly enough, there was not really many games based on it because I remember I was mentioning something with um. Actually, I guess to go into Nickelodeon shows, because feasibly, that's, that makes this the perfect game to talk over. I mean, I can mention what we're doing and rolling up and all that, and then we can go off a bunch of different directions, which is, I guess, what you guys like to do and like to have me do. Um, yeah, they were asking me about Hey Arnold. I was like, I realized, oh, there's only one game specifically based on it, which I think was the one based on the movie on the Game Boy Advance. Whereas I think there were, I mean, because I think with the Angry Beavers, there were characters in, uh, I think Nicktoons Racing, which was on the PlayStation... And then there's like that Nicktoons Kart Racer from Game Mill that came out, which I've heard not great things about. And one thing that already got my, you know, question mark going off is that they relicensed all these franchises, but there's no voiceover at all. I mean, and it's not like some of the voice actors are no longer with us. Okay, some aren't, which is going to be interesting when you have some of those revivals going on. Like, I know Paramount Plus is reviving the Rugrats, and I was like, all right, the voice of Grandpa Joe. Who in the original, or not, no, Grandpa Lou. Grandpa Joe, I'm thinking, really wants the Chocolate Factory. But Grandpa Lou was voiced by David Doyle in the initial run, then Joe Alaski afterwards, and they're both sadly no longer with us. And, um, now they have Michael McKean from Best in Show and, uh, like, Whitey Wind and things like that. It sounds like a great idea. Richard Horvath and Rick Barquet were the shit. They did their characters justice. Yes, they did. Absolutely. And to think that's not even the only, um, times we'd hear those great voices. Of course, later on with Richard Horvitz, we had him in uh, Invader Zim. Actually, in a couple games which I could show off, particularly Destroy All Humans, he played um, uh, uh, Pox, the uh, guy who helps you out in that game. And also, um, a game I'd love to show off at some point, Psychonauts, which I have the Xbox version of. And again, doing the again doing justice to those voices, but also kind of remembering them. And also then kind of being reminded when you run into situations where they don't impress us as much. Actually, I remember this is going off on another tangent of, like, films. Nick Barkay, or Invader Zim, which was terrific. But, um, Nick Barkay, it's funny, he wrote, um, Paul Bart Mall Cop 2, which I remember I went to because people said it was horrible. And it's not a good movie. It's not the worst movie around. I kind of was in a weird place of kind of defending it compared to real things, the death of comedy. It's like, well, not until you see Hot Pursuit, it sure as hell isn't, but... When I found Nick Parquet wrote the script, I said, This movie's not funny, it's a comedy, it's going for that. I'm thinking, he's a very funny guy, and I pointed out um, that idea, too. And thought, well, it's weird, and I'm stuck on the tree. And Alpha 5 in MMPR. Mighty Morphin Power Oh, right, on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, you're right. Wait, that was him? Okay, that I did not know. That's the other thing I love about this uh, concept. You guys will mention stuff that I'm not aware of. I'm not, listen... As much as I maybe give off the sense of it, or I talk a lot or something, I don't know everything, and I'm going to be the first to admit that. Which is why I love that input from everybody here, telling me that, hey, here's an interesting factoid, here's something else about it. And I love that. I love that idea of, again, adding to the discussion, and I welcome that. And in some ways, this is my show, but I'm doing it every week, but it's also in a way your show. Because you want to come in, you want to see stuff, you want to ask me to place certain things... But again, also you can drive the conversation. We're at 30 minutes or 30 second warning. Let's see if I can't get some of those uh, things there. Can I get the uh, the plow or the? I I I oh yeah. <laughs> yeah that should be an that would be an interesting one as far as I guess the Power Rangers game is concerned. Which one would you want me to do though? Because I know there are a bunch of them. I don't know if I have any. I think my girlfriend has the Game Boy version of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie game. But I think outside of that, I don't I don't think that I have access to anything right away on that. I'd like to play the Super Nintendo game, but that's kind of jumped up on in price recently. I mean, if there's any of those that you want to see me get at some point, I'd love to pick them up. 
I mean, in a weird way, I guess I'm enriching my game collection while also showing off stuff that you would all want to see, or things that might be of interest. All right, it's okay, but I can do better. All right, we've clicked mostly flowers this time, or a tie between flowers and containers. All right, so let's see what we got. Actually, I got an achievement. To the end of the world, 70, okay? They're getting bigger. Also, one thing I do is I'm not gonna mic mute the mic on the cutscenes. I think it's cutting off my voice too quickly. Also, I did say Y button. Let me hit that. All right, so it's the cutscene, I guess. Okay, so basically the idea is that, um, alright, so the father is a space, uh, I guess a, uh, astronaut. Yes, please. Yes to a Power Rangers game, I'm gonna assume. Which one? Let me know which one you'd like to see and I will make it happen. Alright, so, with that, and yeah, not much weird happening in that cutscene, but weirdness happening in this mission, because we're going for Ursa Major, and if you know the story of how Ursa Major works, well, well we gotta make it the constellation who is, oh, here, okay, here we go, as if the, um, <clears throat> the parenting uh, themes of this game were not, you know, there already, or I'm, to think like, oh, you're, I'm reading too much of this, no, the game's saying it right now, parenting leaves all the work to the child looks bad, deadbeat, yes? Which is exactly what you're doing! But I think that's also the point of how they're doing this. It's finally done, and then the last one gets away. Stupid bear. <clears throat> or if you're familiar with the movie Alaska with uh, Charlton Heston, I want that bear! Or we're gonna get that bear for my father here by rolling up the bears. Nick Barkay was a writer for Sabrina the Teenage Witch and the voice of Salem. Okay, I was not aware of that. I mean, I'd seen the show a little bit. A few times, but I was not aware of that. So that's interesting to know. And again, interesting information to be able to have and to be able to record. All right, so we got 10 minutes to get bears. And we're hearing again the uh, Moon and the Prince. All right, so let's see what we can pick up. And one other thing I guess I should have mentioned is that for certain levels, they will start you larger than like the 10 centimeters we started at the beginning. So at this point, I'm starting at a, a meter and 60. So with this, I should be able to start picking certain people up, not them. Give me that cart. Or bear. You need to get the biggest bear. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Any game will do. All right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Th yeah, thank you for reminding me. All right, we're... Yeah. Well, actually, I'm glad I showed that. First off, it gave me the achievement really quickly of the Great Bear Tamer. Not great. But there is one other thing... I'll do. I all right. Let's let's see this and let's have let's feel the cosmos. Will you say? Oh no! Fortunately, uh, the girl is um going crazy. But the thing I was saying, uh, in that case, I'm kind of glad I did that because what I can do is go back into it. Where is it? Where's the bear? All right, there, the bear. I forgot that you have to pick the small, uh, pick the big one. Basically, what I gotta do is roll up, but... I think... I'm trying to remember how this works. Because I know there's certain levels, I don't think, maybe it's not this one, where you can do, like, a Stardust roll. All right, so, we need one bear. Yeah, that, that's what I get for not, um, going through this. All right, so, I just have to avoid where the bears are. And I just don't remember... And chat, remind me if this is the case. Does this game do the thing that Wheel of Katamari did, which was... When you get one, it says, like, do you want to go back or do you want to restart? The problem is, is here's the thing, because the camera's pulled out so much, i kind of a little nervous of picking up too many things. I'm kind of going willy-nilly on this, mostly. But I kind of don't want to yet. I think it also counts, because see, there's that no bears sign, or the beware of bears sign. I think that counts as a bear. I mean, it's weird. I kind of just want to... Be careful walking. Okay, good. It's a sea otter. Yeah, but we'll, look. Yeah, thank. Well, okay, don't worry, Edwalk. We're gonna be getting a good bear, a much nicer bear. I guess because I'm bigger, I can at least pick up some other things. I just gotta be a little more careful. Come on, fish. Yeah, go get some tuna right there. All right. Okay. I right, to go back to the Power Rangers thing. I'd like to see if I can get the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Super Nintendo because that's. 
That's an interesting one, and it also has a two-player. And also be an interesting comparison with the Game Boy version that my girlfriend has. And also, because I grew up with that one, she grew up with the Game Boy one. And kind of having that element, and having a two-player. Also, there's like a kind of a Mega Man X vibe to that game in terms of its uh, music, and in terms of some of the elements of its styling. But I've also heard good things on the Genesis Power Rangers movie game, because it kind of plays like Streets of Rage. Which I will be doing this year around... Shit! Alright, stop there. I'll be doing that around September, because I think one of the weekends that the show would go up... Uh, it coincides with the 30th anniversary of the original game, so we're going to do it that then. Okay. Oh shit! Yeah, see, I couldn't even see him, so... Unfortunately, that's the bear I got. Well, I'll try one more time. Okay, we got small, so it's better. Let me see. Okay, good. I've got to show this part off. Now, what happens when you go into a level you've already completed, you can play any level again to go for a higher score. And even if, and you can basically do a decision on what it becomes. You can create a constellation, or you can create the, the planet, or you can turn it into Stardust. Usually you want to turn the Stardust into the ones that are small, or smaller. In this case, because I'm going to try for a bigger one, I'm going to turn it into Stardust. I want to see if it does this, or gives this line. Yeah, he'll destroy it, and he'll turn into stars. Okay, no it doesn't. Um, there's a specific line of dialogue that I don't know if the game gives. If it doesn't, we'll, um, I'll tell you right now. If you do a breakup of the moon, like the kid says in the English version, this is how it sounds, he says, The prince just broke up the moon- no, the prince broke up the moon he just made. Rich people sure are different. Which is why I miss the English voice acting in this version, although I do like having the Japanese as well. It's funny is that the football episode of the Angry Bird when Norbert was the announcer for the game, Dot Nick was a sportscaster, which is a very interesting attention to detail, or even other things kind of going back to that. The fact that they were actually able to get away with having, like, licensed music without feasibly getting the rights for it. I know they had, like, um, they had, um, they used, like, um, uh, James Brown's yell from I Feel Good as the doorbell of Barry the Bear. Barry the Bear is a total takeoff on shit. Again, on the bear, speaking of which, Barry the Bear, fittingly. He's basically take off on Barry White, and they even do, like, um, Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Baby. Or another one, or, actually, there's, like, one episode where they have, like, Will Ferrell as, like, the security guy for, like, the, um, like, the music festival, and it's, like, they're playing stuff, like, by The Who and Jimi Hendrix in the background, which is kind of hilarious. Alright, we'll try the bear one more time. If I can't get a better bear, we're gonna be going on to the next stage. But interesting attention to details as far as that show, and again, making me wish we had a game to talk about for it. Although, feasibly, the Bad Game Thursday concept on one of the Nickelodeon uh, racing games. Or that one, at least. Because I think, I think uh, they're in the, uh, the Nicktoons Racing on the PlayStation, which does have voice. Which was years ago. Which would make sense. Like, if you're going to be making a game based on licenses like that and have your know, personality that have the personality, don't just license the characters in that and it's like, oh, we're not going to give you voice acting. Unless there's, like, a reason why you can't do it. I mean, if it's, like, on an old system, sure. But again, that even doesn't fit because there's a game, and I have this, we can show this off, the Rockers Modern Life game from Super Nintendo has voice clips to it. So it's not like they couldn't do it, even on the Super Nintendo, so... That's weird, but I would have loved to see that concept. But the other reason also I do love the Angry Beavers as a show is, again, it is a perfect representation of, like, what it's like to have a brother. If you've ever... If you're one of those people who has siblings, particularly a brother, like, that is it. That is exactly what it's like, and it's wonderfully funny and charming, and yet also still kind of weirdly touching while also being so unabashedly weird. Or unabashedly itself, I think, is the better way to put it. Which is what I can say on this game, too. And, okay, they, I want to get the big bears like that. But I just need to get myself up and, again, void stuff. Our kids umbrella. Oh, shit! Yeah, that's the other reason you also want to avoid getting hit in this level, because then you get thrown into a bear. Potentially. Or at least... Or avoid that elephant. Okay, can I pick up the taiko drum? No. 
Alright, so there's the elephant at the gas station, which is a totally normal sight in this world. Actually, pick up the gas tanks, can't we? Ugh. It's the Peacock gas station, which I don't think is based off of a real gas station line, unless I'm missing that. It's not like the uh, Paradigm logo in Pilot Wing 64, which is basically it's Sitgo, pretty much. If you've never played that game. No, shit, stop! All right, there we go. Okay, well, I got Bear Man. I guess that's better. Let's see how big Bear Man is. Medium. All right, I'll take that. Not taking it. It's not small, but it's not big either. We didn't lose a bushy-washy bear like this. But I'll slap together an Ursa Major from this, but next time get a bigger one rolled up. All right, so that's going to be our bear. It's going to be Bear Man, and we're turning him into Constellation. All right, but what? I was going to say, okay, it shows the carving is tiny still, was just knocking it out. There we go. Okay, so there's Bear Man. Here's our, he's our bear, so let's go to the next stage. Or next stage is, because I have a couple options. All right, we did one of those. Let's do another uh, Making of Stars. All right, where are we going for? Poland. Okay. Yeah, my, I'm not, I have no knowledge of... of Polish as far as the language, so unfortunately I can't verify that he's right about that. He probably is. All the other ones that I'm aware of, I'm like, no, those are actually like the... I think he's basically just saying hello or giving the greeting in every single language. We're not, not Japanese yet, but I think there is a, a line where he does that. Alright, something about walking the dog, and let's go. Alright. Today we'll be rolling around the world. The Katamari should be six meters. Starting for 50 centimeters. This is going to be a while. 12 minutes. And then we're hearing... Oh, what's this track? Um... Oh, run. Chat, help me out. Which one is this? I don't remember this track completely. N.A. Oh, nah, nah. Oh. Or... <clears throat> Oh, banana. Which is a totally different game. Okay, so he's saying just in... Okay, so he's saying, nah, ba. Okay, so he's like, banana. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, so he just keeps saying that. All right. As I was to say, I don't know how the hell I handled Donkey Kong 64. Because, yeah, that'll probably take me... I, that might take me feasibly a whole year to play that game. If I'm going to be doing that just in episodes like that. Because that's a long one. Oh, man, well, it's long if I'm going for 100%, but that might be one of those I'm always like, no, we're not going for 100%, I'll go for enough, as I need. Because that's a game that can run you, like, 50 hours or more if you're going 100% on it. That being said, I guess I may as well go into this, because we're going to have more rolling to do. The primer has been set, my Metal Gear Solid, for longer games. So, we're going to be, I want to figure that out more. And so, for certain things, I'll be doing that. With this game, again, if I don't finish it by about... I'll probably go to 11, I think, on this. If I don't finish it, we'll come back to it next month, but for uh, that's how I'm going to handle longer games. If we, I go through it and I can't beat it on one sitting, we'll come back to it about a month from then and try and keep it consistent to a certain extent. Because, again, I want to vary it up enough with what we're playing and certain things I know I can beat really quickly. Although, in some cases, it's not going to be the point of beating. The Slam City with Scotty Pippen case is not going to be us beating that game. Full disclosure right now. But, um... I think that's going to be the idea, so I guess for longer games, then we'll go about it that way. And also, I guess with RPGs, because in May I'm going to do Super Mario RPG, we're going to start there, celebrate the 25th anniversary of the game, and I'll do that again on monthly increments. We're also going through stuff in the middle and anything you want to see, or anything else that I feel is worth bringing up. Let's just keep getting all this stuff as we go along, and... Okay, so it's a remix of... I haven't heard this track in a while, actually. Of, like, the end-of-level theme. Which I know the end-of-level theme is, uh, like, uh... Uh, what is it called? Lovely Angel. Alright. Oh, those guys are not going down. Okay. Yeah, I'm noticing the roll is a little different, or it's a little difficult to do, although, again, it is a hard maneuver particularly to go about with this. I'm not sure also how much of the clicking you're hearing on the controller. Hopefully it's not bugging you. I think it's better than last week. I think I got figure, stuff figured out as far as my audio. 
And again, I'm not going to completely be winging it as far as that anymore. So it'll sound nice, I promise. Or sound nice going forward as well. That being said, even some of the stuff I was doing when I was just using my old setup still sounds pretty good. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be archiving that. I will give you updates on that probably in a couple weeks. Or maybe next week when we do... You know, maybe next week because we'll have to do Slam City anyway. I guess for programming notes, we may as well go to that. Next week is Slam City with Scotty Pippen. Uh, the week after that will be um, Elect vs. Request. If you want to see Star Fox 64 for Nintendo 64, we will be playing that game, playing through three times, show up every level. And then, fittingly, Super Sonic Game Saturday for next month in a couple weeks is going to be, or after Star Fox 64, is going to be Shadow the Hedgehog for the Xbox. That's the version we're going to be playing. And one playthrough with you all telling me where to go, which paths to take, what missions to do, then we do Last Story. And then after that, except for the Super Mario RPG thing, and potentially this at the end of next month if I don't finish it tonight, it's all open. So if you want to see anything specific, let me know and I'll make it happen. Or I'll try to make it happen. I'll get what I need and uh, make that happen for you. Because in some ways, as I mentioned, this is a show I'm doing, but it's also... It's like they say the little people who make things possible are the big people, technically, as far as that. As far as him and just everyone in the audience, you guys make this happen, and I appreciate that, so I want to give back that way. Even if it's something as little as, hey, we're going to have a fun time playing a game, have a communal element to it, I want to do it, and I will. Alright, so there's snowmen in, uh, I guess, wherever we are, whatever time of the year we're at. Pick up penguins and pick up, oh, the Russian dolls, basically like the, uh... What, what, what do they call those things? There's like that game stacking by uh, Double Fine was about that. Oh, the police! Yeah, they have guns. They're not going to help here because you have, uh, I guess, the prince is bulletproof or the Katamari is bulletproof. All right, so there's the food delivery box, the garbage, the kids' tricycle, and kerosene. Yeah, it is a very weird, eclectic mix. And there is an achievement in this to get to pick up every item that's in every level in the game. Which is, I think, worth the most because they give you almost a fifth of the uh, uh, almost a fifth of the achievement points out of this for this version anyway. All right, so what's next big? Probably out there where the people are. I can get the sumo guy at almost three meters. I should be able to. Okay, I can't. Yeah, sometimes it's tough to tell, but I almost—I can almost get him. I can't get the the uh, lotuses out there. The giant ones, anyway. All right, he's running away, so we can get him and the, uh, look, oh, the binoculars. Okay, there we go. Three meters, so about halfway. And my Katamari is as big as 818 seat cushions. All right, so that's our three meter go, our three meter gate. That being said, I still want to grab stuff here first, maximize before we head over there. Right, let's get those uh, penguins on the beach because why not? And okay, for a minute there, I thought it was like polar bears walking out of the water, which would not be a weird occurrence. But um, there we go. Or bear man again in the park, or the bike, or the founder's flag. Can we get him? Not a playful punk. You wear bear signs and all that stuff. Oh, the winner's podium. You are your winner. Or a winner is you. Take your pick. As far as what other badly translated, um, you know, winning message you like to hear. That's up there, he said. And there's a robber. Let's, uh... Keep him from robbing. Protect the house before we tear it up, most likely. Where is the way through? Oh, right, it's right through here. This is actually where we need to use the uh, roll up the wall, or the wall climb. Unfortunately, the rock is in the way, so I'm going to have to go over the side. All right, there we go. And again, that's the other thing I do like about this game, if I haven't emphasized this yet. The scope. The idea that as I'm getting it, as I'm building the Katamari, picking stuff up, it gets bigger and bigger, new areas open up, and then I can find other things and just lose people like crazy. 
I get the guardrails, I knock him off the mountain and get stuck. Or seemingly stuck, but that's more the oblong design of the Katamari. Coming down here, I can get the boat and the fisherman. And the, uh, okay, we can't get the, mo the uh, bulldozer yet. We can break up this uh, watermelon hitting festival. There we go. That's how, that's how you go about this. We can get the boulders now. Come on, guardrails. I can't get the trucks yet, but we're almost at six, so it shouldn't be too much longer now to meet the goal. There's the wrestling ring. Let's take that out. I'll try and get in to take it out. Okay, yeah, the guardrails are going to help me out, as well as all the other obstructions. Get that nice cart of food, or... Okay, I can't get that. The all you can eat sign, at least. There's other ones over there, so we'll grab those. What are the other cars? Okay, I can't get that one because it's bouncing around. You can tell you can get them if they don't bounce around. I can't get that one, though. Come on, sedan. Okay, I guess not. I think I have to get six in order to get it. Now let's go back down the other way. Signing off for the night. It's been fun. All right, Edwalk, good to see you. Take care. And I'll have these archived later for um, full viewage of everything. So, then, thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Good to see you all. All right. There we go. We got six. Biggest ten Japanese cars. All right, so we hit the target. Let's uh, rock next. You too. All right, thank you very much. All righty. So, I think with that, we can also go in here. Get the school gate and well, okay, I got one of the presents. I didn't even know where it was, but there we go. All right, let's uh, break up the school the school situation. Oh, there's a present. It was there, it just popped off. We found it. Be sure to keep it in the Katamari. Yeah, that's the other thing about the the presents. You have to get them, but also they can get knocked off. And if you keep them in your ball to the end, then you can unlock where they are. Then we can get a nice something else other than this nice scarf. Right, let's rock this. Yeah, when we get in the water, this is where things get really interesting. You can pick up weird stuff out there, and that car over here. So yeah, we're just pulling up the whole place, and yeah, there we go. We're gonna be pulling up that dock hopefully soon. If we do it in about a minute. Pick up the fences, though, to help out. And eventually the houses! So yeah, talk about, uh, you know, there goes the neighborhood. Quite literally, the neighborhood is going away. There we go. It's just that building insanity, which I just love about this game. Right, so, there, bye-bye tractor. Bye-bye, um... Oh, I still can't pick that dock up. Alright, we have to pick these palm trees up. Or go in here and cause much more havoc if I can get in there with my... There we go. Here we go. Now no one's safe. Give me that totem pole and that mushroom. And I think I was thinking ahead to Wheel of Katamari, because you can pick up the, the cousins in that game and then use them. Whereas I think at this one you can only use them for the multiplayer. You get to nine. Probably not, but we'll see what you can do. Alright, pretty close at least. Okay. So that's it. Let's go back to space. They have to walk the dog. Alrighty. They're pretty big. We make a pretty star. For ours, we make it much bigger. Alright, so Royal Present is an apron. I collected mostly fruit and teenagers. And containers. So yeah, it's a fruit teenager ball. And we're the Rolling Meister now. Alright, so what's going on with the family story? 
宇宙センター行きのバスが来ましたよはーい Kind of dark when you think about sending people to their death. Yes, it is, absolutely, and I think that's something they're aware of. I think either this game or、um, one of the sequels goes into that. It is dark, but it, it's funny that because I'm almost wondering if maybe it goes into like a potential belief system. The idea of because you know, the idea of、um, like certain mythological figures and things, or like. Saints or like Santa Claus or something like that. The idea of like, hey, you know, follow this idea, otherwise you're gonna be punished for it. It's the idea of like the vengefulness of not being a good person. So I almost wonder if maybe that's the idea of kind of basically, in a way, I guess, teaching children, you know, like don't be not cognizant of everything that's not around or don't, I guess, don't、uh, take things for granted. Don't, you know, have your head up in the clouds the way the parents do. Or, Maybe be in touch with your youth. That's probably what this game might be saying. Alright, l so for this one, we need to make a lot of fish. Okay, insert、um, the Godzilla film from 1988. That's a lot of fish. Indeed, it is going to be because we're going to have to roll up the、uh, Katamari to make them. w e l l listen to、uh, the Cherry Blossom Color Season done by the Katamari Group Junior, which is actually a bunch of school kids, I believe, from Japan. We'll hear them sing about everything going on with the cherry blossom stuff and the fish. But I would think, again, going back to what you're mentioning as far as it being a dark idea, it's probably almost like a parable that way of, you know, be in touch with everything around you, don't lose your youth, be a good person, and contemplate that. Keep getting a bunch of fish around. Which I forgot, I love that this track, yet every so often you get each of the children kind of doing like a vocal solo. Yeah. That's one thing I guess I didn't mention as well now I'm thinking about it, which is the idea of that animation of the prince running in the lower right hand corner. Where he'll, do, he'll kind of will react based on certain things like crashes and stuff, and I do the flip like that. Or some other things. I just have to remember it, I didn't put the apron on, so I'll have to put that on next time. So let's see if I can't pick up the flag sticks for the golfers. And whatever that is over there. Sandcastles. Would you think they just collapse in on themselves, but we can just add it to our Katamari? Do the penguins count? No, they do not. No, they wouldn't. They're not fish. What am I thinking? Still worth picking them up, though, to get the Katamari a little bigger. At least I can get, yeah, get them in there. It's almost, actually, looking at them like that, it almost looks like, you know, if you had the, like, the Billy Bob fish, those things you find in, like, Walmart, or things like that, where you have the singing fish on the wall. It almost looks like that. Which I wonder if that's what they had on their mind, because I think those things were kind of, sort of, around at that time. Alright, okay, t h o u g h the Stingray count. s I don't know if the Stingray are technically. They probably are. My knowledge of fish, or what is fish, doesn't, you know, really have much of a storied element. And tell me that's not my, fi my focus. That's not my day job either. It doesn't have anything to do with fish, so. There we go. Come on, jump in, jump in. Yeah, I'll, actually, going back to the Angry Beavers, that's almost like the idea of, you know, the one episode where the,、uh, where the salmon are trying to, quote, spawn us to death, and, but they're just jumping and they're just landing and stuff. So, yeah, this is not a long level, this one, because they only give you about five minutes. It also seems like it's kind of、uh, compacted at the end. So you can kind of find the fish pretty quickly. And I think those statues will also count, too. Yes, they will. I mean, as long as it's fish based, the game will look at it. It's like the thing with the bear. It's like, yeah, anything, even like a sign of a bear, will do it. And that's why I forgot, oh, right, you can only pick up one of those.
there's some more fish. It doesn't seem like I've seen it. Okay, there's some over there. Actually, oh right, the mermaid count is fish technically, or at least to this game they do. So yeah, you can pick up the mermaid girls, and yeah, they're going, they're going bye bye to our uh, Katamari. we're getting pretty good and you can tell by the way when you're getting close to the massive amount for one of these uh i guess constellation missions by the way that the uh the star field up there is it gets bigger and bigger you know you're getting closer and closer but i'm not picking these tuna up i was like that seems weird yeah probably just because the oblong stuff there, like the yeah the barbed wire fence that's probably what's causing that Yeah, those signs are actually really getting in my way. So I'm going to take my aggression out on the golfers. And just send him launching over there. Right, so I have a minute to get a few more fish. But I've got a pretty good amount so far, so I'm not going to really complain too badly. I, I want to get through that. Or wait a minute. Am I not able to go through that? Or it would have been easier if I was smaller. Right, there we go. Alright, so usually you want to get to top areas like this or kind of go around in a circle because then you can find other stuff. But it doesn't look like there's many fish things around. Alright, there's a business on a field for some reason, as well as a housewife. Maybe around the other side of the street. That's, uh, I don't know if you can even get in there, or if you have enough time to even get in there. But, alright, 135 is not bad. Fresh. Indeed. Huge haul, 77%. 135. There you go, Professor Pisces. Yeah, I'm not gonna choose left and right in this thing. Yeah, it is very strange, especially when you hear the English voiceover for this. I highly recommend you looking up the English voiceovers, and why is that, um... I don't think that was going... Wait, one thing I'm gonna do that I haven't done... Yeah, actually, I have not saved this game yet. Yeah, let's do that, lest I run into trouble. Alright, save it to this file. Well, Alright, you save it to the, the, uh, like, Namco logo. Or there's... Uh, no, we're not quitting yet. I just wanna do that, lest, like, I get something happen, like the game crashes or something. All right, Gemini, make a star, make Tauros. You know, let's go through the rest of the constellations, and then we'll do the next level. Because usually the constellation stuff is shorter. It has no mystery. The sky has no mystery. Twins. Okay. All right, I don't remember what this mission is. Eek, identical, mind bending, uncanny. Get as many twins as you can and make a twin pack Katamari. You have 11 minutes. Right, I got the gin rose and tonic going. Twin boots. Oh, wait a minute. It's twins of anything, basically. Okay, I can't pick the kids up yet because I'm not up high enough. Okay. So, as it's twins, they're talking about getting pairs of things. So if you see one thing and it's up and or there's a pair of two of them, get both of them to get get credit for the pair. Again, for a game like this, kind of makes it you know you're gonna want to pick up everything anyway, so just keep picking up the things in pairs. I guess these are the things in pairs that are standing in pairs. I guess stuff like the bats there in a line don't count. 
Alright, there we go. Okay, there's the pumpkins and the cats. Alright. Right, we get the people yet. Okay, not, not yet. We have a little more we gotta go. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting stuck a lot, although I think that's kind of how the game works, so that's... I don't think that's, like, an efficiency with it, really. Oops. Okay, I guess... Was one of those phones a pair? No, I guess not. I would think the boots would be, but apparently not, either. Alright, I can get the kids now. Okay. I think I need to go over this way. Actually, this is a track I do like, going back to the music for a second, because I do love kind of just the styling of this one, although that's pretty much the entire soundtrack to a certain degree. And pretty much all of the Katamari games, when you really think about it. Alright. So those, those, those kids, or whatever they are, one looks like um, uh, Lucas from Mother 3. But I think, yeah, this game, I don't think, this game, I think, came, uh, predated it, I think. Because when was Mother 3? Mother 3, I think, was 2000... Was that 2003, or was that 2005? I don't remember when that was. So maybe this was at the same time. Alright, so Timmy and Jimmy. As opposed to Bimmy and Jimmy, or Billy and Jimmy, as it is, for Double Dragon. This, this, they're not, or I'm not big enough. Going to school, pick the kids up. Hopefully there's some pairs in here. Or if nothing else, you can at least build it up a little more. That's really what you want to do in this. Just build up and go. Oh, or get knocked aside by them. And that That's a sin that can't go unpunished. Yeah, they're running now. They're playing dodgeball with, like, pushing, pushing it into us. Damn. Alright. Alright, get back here. I, I don't want them to, you know, live now. It really couldn't knock its stuff out of me. Jeez. Yeah, it seems like they're seeking onto me. You know what? Okay, they did stop a little, but actually, I don't know if I can get them. Okay, yeah, I can't get them. All right, I thought I could. Or I'm not big enough to get them. Alright, so we're leaving school, and we're gonna go back and get the other stuff. I'm not doing well with getting the pairs, but I'm also just trying to pick everything up. I should have 
should be able to pick these things up now. Hopefully. Yeah. I guess I get what you're saying, like, first going back to the dual analog thing. Well, not because I'm having problems with it, just because now it's, this is the part of the game where you're really starting to, I guess, feel a little out of control in some ways. Get to keep enjoying this music. Especially the piano thing. That's another one I guess I'm a sucker for. Like, good jazzy piano, which this is. Can we get them off? Yeah, they can just uh, go into the ball that way. Oh, this, oh, the brother and sister fireman. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't even remember that was there. No, okay, unfortunately those aren't pairs. I wish they were. Maybe I can go get those uh, dodgeball kids again. If I get him off. The guys don't count as twins. The one in front is in charge. Alright. Yeah, but I want these guys gone. And it's still not enough. Okay. I got. I don't know how big I have to be, but I have to go get him. Because he's going to be a problem. But there's one over here. I don't know how big I have to be to get them, but I at least get these guys. Okay, or miss. The tuplets are not the same thing. No. They are, though. Okay, yeah, so you told you your, ja your dad could get you judgmental in this game. Okay, I can pick up the damn fences now. I should be able to pick up those dodgeball kids. I'm kind of adamant just to get them because they've been making me look like a fool. Alright. Well, I also got a. Uh... Oh, Lupin! Alright. I'm pretty sure they had Lupin the third on their minds when it comes to this. Okay, bastard, you're going down. Man, it's... I can pick up the fences before I can pick them. Maybe you can't pick them up. Yeah, I was saying, they clearly had a uh, loop on the third, I think, on their mind. Particularly the jazzy music. That's something I really kind of get out that. And there is a loop on game I could play. Um, what is it? It was on the PlayStation 2. It was, uh... Treasure the Sorcerer King, I think? I remember the name of it. I played it. It's not that great a game, particularly as far as um, stealth games are concerned. Because it came out right when Splinter Cell did, I think about a year or two after, I think. Or around the time, at least. Actually, no, it came out right when Pandora Tomorrow, Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow came out. And it really was kind of wonky, but as a fan of that Enterprise, it still was pretty interesting. Particularly the fact they got all the voice acting to it of the dub, which is really nice. It's a lot cheaper now, as well, to get, so feasibly that could be another one to show off at some juncture. Actually, I guess I could, what I could do feasibly, because there's another thing, is if maybe, I'm, I guess I'm kind of just trying to spitball ideas of the show, along with games you want to see, maybe what I should do at some point is, and this will be an after I do the Sonic stuff this year, or feasibly if there's a Sonic game that fits in with that, theme months. These are I'll pick games, and follow a theme for a month. Perhaps, like, for example, picking that Lupin game in particular as a, as a potential hypothetical on that. Doing that as a, here's a, uh, here's, like, anime-themed stuff. Because I do have a bunch of games based around animes and connection with them, so that could be an interesting concept, too. Actually, I guess feasibly in that case, I could 
pick a Sonic game that has the voice acting from Sonic X in it. Which is basically any of the, I guess, so-called... Damn it! I'm not gonna be able to get them, am I? But any of the so-called Dark Ages era stuff, because that was where the four kids' actors were. Alright, fine. I got 60 of these. I'm gonna be set. Only about half, a little over. Alright. Fun. There we go. So there's the Gemini family. And let's feel the cosmos once more. I'm loving this feeling. Alright. Also, let me also, before I forget, let's put the apron on. Oh, oh, you can only put one on. Oh, right, I forgot about that. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go the apron. I think it's the later ones. I think it might be Wheel of Katamari, again, that does this, where you can mix and match. Or maybe it's not even. Okay, so there's Vegas Star 6. Okay, 8's the next one. And then Taurus is the only other one we got. Let's do that one. This is gonna be the last of the constellations, and I think... You know, let me look at something quick. We're gonna go on the achievements because it's gonna be a list of... Okay, nine I think is the last one. So I guess we feasibly will be beating this game tonight. Again with the dead beat dead thing. Alright, but now we gotta get cows. We're talking about Wagyu beef before. Now I think we... I think it is the same as the uh, Ursa Major... Ma ma the Ursa Major situation. Yeah, we need to get one big one. And it'll give me 10 minutes to get all... I have to find where a good one is. Ow. Uh, one thing I'm wondering... Okay, good. I thought if I picked up the thermos that it would count as milk and that would be a cow. Because I know Wheel of Katamari does that. Okay, that's too small. Can't even get those umbrellas, alright. Oh right, this is that, those pylons over there, the things that have the little, uh, spots on them, that does count as a cow, so you don't want to pick that up. The people thankfully don't count as that, but I'm not big enough to roll them up, apparently. Or the ice cream. I also, I don't, I, okay, I'm, I'm hoping that picking up the ice cream does not count as, like, milk and then it's a cow. Actually, that's... Oh, that's a sheep. You know what, I'm not gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna bother. Okay, good, the strawberry ice cream cone does not count. Perfect. A little better now, and that I should be able to get the teeth. Well, there we go. I do love the graphic style of this, it's almost like Legos in terms of how simplistic they are, but it does have a nice charm. At least this version runs smoothly, so I'm not gonna complain about that. There's tiny cows, but I want a bigger one. That being said, unlike the bear one, I'm not going to come back if I get one too small.
Line up for a barber's appointment? No, you're not. Yeah, I kind of want to go in there to get one of the bigger one of the bigger cows, but I don't know if I'm big enough to get them yet. All right, there we go. Oh shit! Ah, damn it, the sign. No stealing cows. All right, all right, all right. Small. All right. Yeah, scrape a Taurus up on that. Sorry. That's what happens, and I'm now reminding myself like why I don't like these missions. It's like, yeah, I usually want small thing. Moo Moo Farmer. I guess for you Mario Kart 64 fans. I do love that one right there where the, where the girl says, Tauros comes crawling back. Moo. It is very nice. All right, with that, I think we have, I think we have two more of the uh, star missions, but these are where they're gonna get really long. This one and the next one, I believe. Okay, so he went to Russia in this one, and off we go. Twelve meters, eighteen minutes. All right, so. Always to keep, to keep hearing this piece of music, which I love. And I guess that's the other thing about this game, which is even when you're in a level for a long time, it doesn't necessarily, at least to me, it doesn't get boring, even though I'm like, yeah, I'm doing the same thing technically over and over again. But also because the music is so good that I like hearing that. What is that, bread? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, no it is, because there's strawberry jam next to it. Yeah, really, I guess not much more to say, honestly, as far as what I'm doing, but... Again, being able to enjoy the atmosphere and uh, the strangers, which I guess, in a weird way, I'm curious about this chat then. Since you've been seeing this game for almost three hours now, especially if you're not that familiar with it. <clears throat> Are you like me when it comes to this, where eventually you kind of just start to, well, mm, pun-wise, roll with it in the sense of what you're doing and, I guess, the styling? And now you're like, yeah, it's not seeming as weird, but again, I'm interested enough as far as the gameplay, so I'll keep playing. Love being able to roll those people up now, or when I can do it at least. <clears throat> I just realized it looks like I was kind of clipping through the floor. Okay, yeah, yeah, he is clipping through the floor a little bit. The prince is cool, he can handle that. Well, those things are coming out of the ground. I guess I got it already. Oh, an Odin. Yeah, 
pet bottle. I guess it's like what? Pet water? I was actually thinking about that. I was thinking that would be like a um like a licensed thing, like a I think it's like pet milk. But I know they don't have like some licensing thing. I don't, I don't think this game ever did that, because it probably would go against the whole idea of how it's poking fun at consumerism to a certain extent. Okay, 45 is the way to go through there, okay. I knew there was going to be a path I could go through that, I just didn't remember where it was, or how big I had the, the Katamari set for. Oh, okay, one more good thing to do it. There we go. As big as 98 fried chicken legs. There we go. Down the hill we go. There we go, pizza time. One point five meters. Okay, so that's what to go there. Yeah, for the later levels they give you a couple areas, and I think I believe the last one basically has you going entirely throughout the entire world. I will say I am potentially tempted to hold that, hold the rest of that off for next month. Not necessarily because it's um that long or super. Well, okay, it's sort of long. Yeah, I think it's like half an hour. So you know what? I think I think what I'm probably going to do is I think we'll do. This mission will do one of the, uh, I think there is one other, one of the, uh, uh, Constellation missions, and I think I'll probably come back to this next month. And then it'll be a little shorter when I come back to it. Actually, you know, by doing that, maybe I can also show off the two-player, but I don't know if I'll be able to make that happen. I'll see what I can do. Unfortunately, there's no online for this game, so I can't show it off that way, but I'll, I'll try and see if I can't scrounge something up to show off more of it. Also, I guess in that case, that means that uh, in the next month we're playing this again, and we'll come back. I think that kind of works, and it's interesting because, again, it's kind of giving me an idea of, like, what should the length of these games be? It kind of goes with the game. I guess it sometimes goes how I'm feeling, which usually I can handle that fine. But I'm also just thinking, well, in a lot of ways, I guess maybe I'm not as active with what I'm doing right now. But... Yeah, I think we can keep this going for a little while longer. And again, it's been about three hours. Because it is a challenge, as I've mentioned before. Being able to comment over a game where, in some cases, you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again and keep it interesting for you while also keeping a chat going, which... I guess I've been doing a decent job of it, especially tonight as well. I've had a lot of activity going on with this game. And those tend to be my favorite kinds of, uh, ones of the streams I do, but even, again, smaller settings with only a couple people, or a couple focused as far as that works, too. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the pickaxes. Yeah, the oblong concept of, like, yeah, the pickaxe going into the ground. I mean, yeah, there's clipping in this game where it's going through the floor, but it is also kind of launching a Katamari a little upwards, so I have to be careful of that. Again, that's also how you miss things in the road. You're trying to roll towards it. Actually, I guess that's one other thing I didn't mention, which is when... In the game, when you go through the music, it plays through with its vocal. You then it then repeats it, but then it actually does an instrumental version, which is very nice. You get the best of both worlds that way. Because I know people who like hearing the instrumental stuff as opposed to the non-instrumental or the vocalized stuff. So it kind of gives them the best of both, while also keeping it a little more interesting when you have to go through a level for 18 minutes. Right, let's get the lottery and the kebab. Bulldog, let's get him. And we're almost being able to go to the next area. Come on, kid. Oh, he just disappeared. Okay, he just went through the building. Okay, there we go. Alright, biggest three taiko drums. 
make it bigger and the uh, next area is over there. That's the other reason I love this track now I'm thinking about it. That nice jazzy guitar stuff, it just sounds terrific. And you only get this part of the song when it gets the instrumental stuff, because I either it's not when it's going uh, with the vocals or you can barely hear it. Oh, yeah, I want to avoid the, the monster truck. Space heaters as well. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of weird things to pick up, but a lot of neat things to see. This is what keeps this game going and keeps you wanting to play. Turn around though, I want to get that guy. He was a skater boy, and I said, See you later, boy, you're going up into the stars. There's another one. There's the punks. That's interesting sight to see the punks playing on the uh, on the playground equipment. They seem like they're very, you know, satisfied with that. Then again, what's the? Yeah, I want. Yeah, let him spin around to hit me there. Yeah, who's up on the jungle gym there? Or what are they? Okay, yeah, bye bye, punk. I guess if I'm doing quoting, I could say, Do you feel lucky today, punk? It's just it's clearly not. I can answer that question right away. Oh, wow. Seiji Bondo. Yeah. Alright, there we go. The, uh, that old thing where you put your face into, like, a picture and it shows. Alright. Alright, there we go. It's always satisfying when you get to that next size. Yeah, I'm really getting myself crashed into or crashing into stuff a lot. Okay, yeah, I don't, it's weird the delivery guy's on top of the jungle gym. I just want to find out who that was or what that was. That's an interesting scarecrow. Okay, there's okay, there's another gate. Take the baseball team out. Yeah, ooh, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely get jittery right there. Come on. Yeah, it's because I'm too big. Get through that. Yeah, I'm starting to actually sort of worry a little bit because I'm going to get five minutes and I'm barely there. There we go. Are as big as a random shop. And I do like in this version that you can just press start and it skips that uh, element. In the original, I think what it did is it did the loading time basically by saying like, yeah, just goes to the text, but you can skip it. Be able to get the okay, not yet. Okay, now I can get the cards, it's gonna make this a lot easier. Big from the humble beginnings we started at with the uh, tiny Katamari. Alright, there we go. Yeah, it gets way faster when I start picking up buildings. There we go, now we can roll around town. Now we can get the trees. There we go, now we're gonna make this. Yeah, what a sight here. Like, all these trees and the entire town being turned into a star. All because my father went out on a bender. Alright, there we go. So, 15 and a half, or almost 16 minutes, we got it. Let's see if we can't roll the entire town up. And get the helicopter as well. Get most of the town down, including all those nice houses over there. We get the windmill. That's gonna be really funny. Assuming I can get it. We get the bungalows at least. But not quite the gas station yet, but soon enough. I got one minute left to do this. There we go, got the steel towers going. So yeah, nothing is gonna be saved. We need to get the gas station at least. There we go. And the windmills. There we 
here. Roll. Yeah, you do roll slower, but again, you're tearing everything up. There we go. Big. <clears throat> Got mostly roadways and a tie between partitions and plants. Alright, we'll do one more of the missions and get another uh, achievement. Get the Townmeister. We'll do Make It Star 9 uh, next month and I'll do one more uh, mission tonight. Of the tiny bits. We'll call it part of the tonight. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that will be continued next week when we do that, but we're gonna do one more mission of the tiny ones and then we'll call it a night. Let's see. That is Mega Star 9. I think that's. You know what? Let's go into that briefly because I want to show. see how long that one is, just so I'm curious. And then we'll do with the other missions. Alright, so he's talking Mongolia. We'll look at that next week, but I just want to see how long this goes. Thirty meters in twenty minutes. All right, we'll do that next week. Or not next week. We'll do that next month. In the meantime, let's do one last mission. Then again, hold on. Let me look at this again. I already got half the achievements out of this. Okay. All right, the North Star is the last one. Virgo, make the moon. Okay, so we'll have three more to go, and those are pretty, you know, substantial. So we'll do Virgo, and we'll do the other ones next month. All right. So last on our docket. Let's see what this is all about. So our our uh, space is not pretty, so we gotta make it pretty. And then with that, we'll call it a night. Pretty maidens, okay. 11 minutes, all right, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's call it, take ourselves out with the uh, only rolling star. Yeah, in this case, I think we gotta pick up all the girls, I believe. Like, I think it's just- I think it's picking up the girls, let's see. Not much to pick up that I can, you know, hit now. Okay, the garden plants, those are probably gonna be the best bet. There we go, so... Oh yeah, so I gotta pick up all the girls. the darkest one talking back to chat as far as the idea of, you know, rolling these people up. Like, yeah, we're rolling up all the women.
you guys sit there and let the mermaid just come into the Kaldamari. Or, there we go. Come on. Conscious now. That's weird, she's hanging on a balloon. Yeah, I said I was desensitized to the idea of the, some of the weird elements of it, but then you just run into like, hey, that's interesting. I'm get back into it. Did you get that girl statue probably will count too. thing in the rest of the ring. Oh, hey, that's interesting. Looks like... I wonder if that... That girl on the broomstick with the cat, I wonder... I would not put that past this game. I'm wondering if that's a reference to the film Kiki's Delivery Service. I would think it'd have to be. Which is awesome, because there's not enough references to that... That wonderful movie in gaming. The only other example I can think of where there is is technically Kirby's Dream Land 3 and Kirby 64. Because there's an enemy named KK, who's also a witch. I'm pretty sure that's what that's based on. As far as anything Ghibli based, as far as gaming, the only real case of that I could really show off would be... Oh, I mentioned the Lupin third game, which is not based on any of the Ghibli elements. But then there's also Nino Kuni, which is on Switch. I could play that. That would be a long one, because it's RPG. The one I would like to show at some point. I like to play at some point, but I never got around to it. Get to the girl okay, there we go. Yeah, the girl statue counts. Yeah, 
Group photo was a bust. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, technically they can have a group photo when we turn them into, uh, you know, the star. As was Parent Teacher Day, yeah. On a Saturday. At 10.20 p.m. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know how many more of these things I have. Or how many more women I can pick up. Yeah, it's feasible. I guess I can get them all. You like the annual physical. You want me to do it, so we're doing it. Actually, no, there, okay, there is one other thing you can get. Yeah, Mitsuri girl here, I... Wait, did the... Oh, no, I went in there already. Yeah, for a minute I thought that the uh, wrestling girls disappeared. I might end up getting all of them here, potentially. Right, there's one of the gas station I didn't get, or a couple of the gas station. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, hanging upside down from the balloon. That doesn't sound good. Okay, find more statues. I have almost every one of them here, it seems like. I don't remember if in this game, I know Beautiful, or I think Beautiful Calamari does it, I know We Love does it, where they give you, if you get a mission like this and you get all of them, it then tells you, hey, you got them all and you win instantly. Or you end instantly, I should say. Let me said, I got quite a haul. One minute left. Yeah, it looks like I might have gotten all of them, or almost all of them. Okay, there's a statue I missed. Oh, here's a few I missed. I don't think that- I think that's all of the maidens I'm gonna grab here. So, we're done. Okay, maybe those little dolls over there, but... be still my beating heart. Uh, let's see what happened. I'm back, took a shower. Fair enough, I was rolling up... the maidens. We smelt it. Oof. Yeah, I don't know if that- Okay, 88%, so there's definitely some I missed. Alright, there's a scent- Oof. Yeah, um... Maybe this hasn't aged that well, I'm gonna say that. There's a scent of maidens everywhere. It fills the cosmic space. Of course, there's 177 of them. Wonderful. Got much more pretty, but of course, we'll be far, far prettier. All right. So we're going to release to the sky and... Kawaii Researcher. Wow, that's one way to put it. Making fur go. Let's feel this one. So pretty indeed. All right. Okay, so what I mentioned was is that from the look of the achievement list, I'm pulling this out a lot tonight, it seems, and we've been seeing a lot of it. Um, again, the hardest achievement in the game is this one. Get every item off of every level. And then getting the presents. But yeah, the only other ones, this is basically for completion. So we have... These three stages left. Thing is that these stages go along for a long time. The ninth one is about 20 minutes. This one, I think, goes almost an hour. And this one, I think, is... Okay, no, this one goes an hour. That's the last level. And North Star, I think, is another long one. So, I think what we're gonna do is... 
I think we're going to call it for the game for tonight. But I'll come back to this in about a month. So, a month from today, that would be... Put us at... Hmm. When does that go as far as the calendar looks? That would be on April 24th. That will work because... We're entering April next week. I can't believe we're already, like, a fourth of the way done of the year. But, yeah, we're entering April next week, and I have my docket pretty much set for that month already. So, feasibly, we can do this game again one more time and finish everything off. And it gets if it gets too short, I'll throw in a bonus. I'll throw in um, Mr. Driller, because I have that on this to play. Because there is a similarity with Katamari for that. So, what I'm going to do is... We're gonna go to data, and we're gonna save. Now, so I think three and a half hours this game. That's gotten the point across nicely for this time. We'll have a decent amount next time. I kind of was thinking, like, well, we'd go into part two again next month for this game and for the rest of it. And I'll let the demo play as I go through the, uh... Or, no, I'll hit game start so we see the, uh... Nice opening with the, uh... Oh, right, when you have a save file now, I mean, we may as well show this off, we'll see this when I come back to this. It lets you load your save file, and basically you have to... ...or the not, the na, and then there's the M and the co. So we'll continue that for the purpose of showing off the demo. And hearing, um, Katamari, uh, or, uh, Katamari and the Rocks, the main theme is... That also will be one of the last level, they play... The entire song, whereas this is a shortened variant of this terrific opening theme in a terrific game with terrific music and style, and it's weirdly uh, lagging a little on the on this. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, so with that, I'm gonna call it for Super Bowl Game Saturday for tonight. Next week, we're gonna be playing Slam City with Scotty Pippen, which is gonna be experience. It's gonna be very wacky. It's gonna be very weird. It's going to be. Yeah, it, you're not going to miss that. That's not going to be a completion game. We're not finishing that. It's too damn hard and cryptic for that. But more to get to tonight's game. Then I'm going to start with the Hedgehog. One pick up. And we will go through the final story. And then one month from here. Okay. We actually haven't seen the, uh, you know, the, the uh, title screen for this. And hear this really nice piano piece. Yeah, and in a, and in a month, after the week after we do Shadow the Hedgehog, we'll come back to this. This should take about an hour, hour and a half. And I can buttress that to two. In fact, you know, I'll toss in uh, Mr. Driller online, because there's some similarities with some elements of it in terms of some of its stylings and also some of the audio, honestly. So I think that might be a nice bonus to show off. But yeah, in the meantime, that is Katamari Damacy, the re-roll version We'll come back. In the meantime, though, I've had a lot of fun playing this. This is a good version of it from what I've played so far. And if you've never played it, this is probably the easiest way to get a hold of it. It's on the Switch. It's on the PS4. It's on the Xbox One and the PC. And also, by extension, the Xbox One and PS4 version will be played on Series S, Series X, and uh, PS5, respectively. And it's also on the PlayStation 2. It's actually pretty cheap, so if you want to go old school with that, it's not going to cost you mostly 20 bucks on the PS2. But I would recommend this game. It definitely is something strange, and if you really think about it, really dark. But, um, yeah, it's good stuff. And I had a lot of fun playing it. I thank again Ed Walk and Mickey for the recommendation, and I look forward to coming back next week with Slam Skitty. Oh, Slam City. I keep saying that weird. But, um, I look forward to that and all of your other suggestions that I'll take into account and try and figure what I can do and do updates on them when I can have them. And I think probably in May is when I'll probably fulfill some more of those, I mean, aside from Star Fox 64. And technically this one, I guess, going back in months. But okay, I think that'll uh, take us out, so I'll let uh, the Prince and the King and his wife, we didn't mention her, but we'll see her in the Love Conomore and PS2. But anyway, I had a good time, hope you did too, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next week with Slam City with Scotty Pippen, that's gonna be a trip. I don't think you want to miss that, but again, thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your night, rest of your weekend, rest of your week technically, and keep being awesome. I'll see you next week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Super Bowl Game Saturday. As always, take care.